Right, microphone is on, I hope. If I can find my waist, I'll clip my belt on. Ah, dear. Are we live? Yes, I believe we possibly actually are. Well, what is that I'm showing? Oh, I get it. Good evening. It is currently 22.11 on the 28th of December, 2018. There's a lot of twos and eights in that. Anyway. Welcome to the live stream, Mike's Unboxing. This is the penultimate live stream of the year. So welcome if you're uh, joining us now live or if you're watching us in the repeat, then I hope you had a great Christmas and Santa was very kind to you. And for those of you that do not believe there is a Santa, where did those presents actually come from? Let me know, I don't know. Things just appear underneath your tree. I think it may be burglars, I'm not entirely sure possibly, or spiritual intervention. Now that's a little bit philosophical for this time of night. But anyway, so, what a year it's been. Some crazy stuff. AMD has risen from the ashes even more so than what it had previously, and things are looking pretty good. Nvidia have done Sweet FA pretty much most of the year, and have basically rehashed an old product and added reflections to it. If I wanted reflections, I'd buy a mirror. Although with this, you probably don't want a mirror. Anyway, I digress. So hopefully you've all got something to uh, to drink. Now I have got this, <laughs> well, you can't actually see it, but this was a Christmas present from my daughter. And if I get it close enough, you may just be able to see that. It's got written on it. Mike's unboxing reviews and how to love from Angel, my daughter. So cheers, Angel. That's, there's a meme right there, isn't there? And you wouldn't think it, but that what is in there is actually an entire can of beer. And then it goes like halfway, or sorry, bottle of beer. Who would have thought it? But luckily I got my friend, Captain Morgan, who's gonna keep it topped up. And uh, hopefully this doesn't get too, uh, too obscure or strange, but it probably will. So anyway, this week, well, this stream, oh, I cannot tell you how much grief I've had this week from Microsoft in particular. Now, I started doing a video, filmed most of it, struggled through most of it, I'll be completely honest. So I did an unboxing of this Rio Toro Aorus Z5 Classic RGB gaming mouse, which in itself was a, uh, a feat because the drivers for this thing were, I wouldn't say a, a massive pain, but it just says for drivers, go to www.riotoro.com. Fair enough. But trying to find the actual right drivers initially wasn't as straightforward as I thought it would be. Although it did turn out I was being stupid and clicking on the wrong thing. So there's very subtle differences between some of the Rio Toro branding. Um, yeah, long story short, I got the wrong driver so it didn't work and I couldn't get the RGB to work. So that drove me mad. Eventually got the right driver, installed it all, got the RGB to work, filmed it, fantastic, happy days. All part of a video which was to highlight the fact that Microsoft have now added keyboard and mouse support to Xbox. Yay! Which is brilliant because if you're anything like me and you try playing first person shooters on one of these things, it is a total mockery. How can, I don't know how the kids did they do it. Do they, sort of, they come out of the womb with specially coordinated thumbs that actually work like a crosshair? I really don't get it, I, I just don't understand it. It does make it easier in some instances, Fortnite in particular on the Xbox, if you're playing it, then obviously you've got your controls like down left, right, blah, 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 blah. But then you've also got the extra shoulder buttons and stuff which you can set up to build stuff and all that kind of thing, which, when you're doing it on a keyboard and mouse, yeah, you can do it, but because of how easy it is to kind of memory, memory muscle, muscle memory, whatever it is, it's, it's actually does become quite easy. But traditionally for a first person shoot 'em up, it is absolute pain in the uh, godongas or whatever you want to call them. It's just, you can't get the accuracy and then you have these kind of like auto aim bots, which are kind of built into the software or into the programs, which 
supposedly make it easier to aim, but it just takes away the skill in my opinion. Anyway, I'm digressing a little bit. Oh damn, I said I wasn't going to say that word no more. I'm very upset with myself, I will have to have a drink. Mm. Cheers everybody. Right, so, installed the mouse and the driver, and actually I've got to say, for a cheap ass gaming mouse, the Auras Z5 Classic is actually pretty awesome. If you like Logitech mice, and that kind of, the feel that Logitech mice give you, they're slightly smaller and a little bit more rounded, so they fit nicely into your hand, especially if you've got slightly uh, sausage-like fingers like me. So for me, this is perfect. And actually, I've got beer spit on this from the last week as well. We had a drinking accident in the last live stream, so it didn't go well. But anyway, this is a cool mouse. Cath, as usual, we'll put links in the description and all that kind of crap later, and it'll be in the bottom, so if you want to pick up some of this stuff, you can get it for yourself. Actually, I really like this Rio Toro stuff. It is, it is growing on me like a fungus. So, also, to go with this video, which I was doing on how keyboard and mouse works on the Xbox, I was using this. Now, this is the Rio Toro Ghost Writer Classic Keyboard. Now, this is a kind of mechanical keyboard, so it's got the, the feel of a cherry switch, but without the expense of a cherry switch, which for me is actually a, a pretty cool thing. But also, it doesn't have that massive volume of a switch, so you can use it in a kind of a relatively open environment without pissing everybody off, which for me is excellent. Uh, as it says there, smooth, quiet, low profile membrane keys. They are membrane, but they do feel really nice. And the keyboard itself, in the actual build quality and the feel of it, is the same as the Ghost Writer um, Prism RGB, which is actually an amazing keyboard. And it's got the same features as well. It's got the, the roller for the volume up and down, all that kind of stuff, the hardware buttons, like the Corsair K series, I think, K70 is it? And also it's got a couple of USB ports built in so you can daisy chain stuff or you can plug a controller into the back of the keyboard or flash drive so you don't have to reach around to the back of the PC. And I know most of us like a reach round, but sometimes it's just not convenient or not the right time. But with this, you don't have to worry about it. You just plug it straight in. It's absolutely awesome. So going on to what happened. So unbox both of them already. I've got my monitor from there, unplugged all that. It's got it here. I've got my Xbox all plugged up. Took ages to get back online because I haven't used it for ages, so I had to sign into the account, update my two-stage authentication and all that kind of BS. And it's like, I got to the point where I'm thinking, like, I've paid for this console. You know who I am. It's in my house, for God's sake. You know my IP address. Can you just not let me play these damn games? Please? It's not too much to ask, is it? Is it? Really? In this day and age? Like, geo geo-orbital bloody recognition or something so they know that it's in your house. Wouldn't that be a lot easier than a password or a thumbprint? Yeah, probably would. Anyway, so eventually got uh, Fortnite installed on the Xbox, which weirdly is free, but there is a caveat. So if you want to play free games on Xbox, no problem at all, absolutely free, don't have to pay a penny. But because they're online games, you have to have Xbox Live, which is a real kick in the tits. So you, then you've got to get out your credit card or whatever your paying method is, and then you've got to sign up for Xbox Live. Now for me, I was just doing this for a demonstration. I don't play online games on the Xbox. I don't really like the Xbox at all. I'd actually quite be happier just to take a chainsaw to it or some kind of like really heavy implement and just smash it to pieces. Or yeah, I'd possibly even put it in a blender or let the garden strimmer have its way with it with the metal blade rather than the plastic blade. I think that may cut an interesting video. Yeah, anyway, so I was lost there. So got it all set up, paid this thing. Luckily I had a, an option, so it's like Xbox Live for a month, the gold edition for a dollar. It's like, well, hang on. Um, no, I'm in the UK, I don't have any dollars, but luckily they did a translation for me, so 71 pence later or whatever it was, I'm on Xbox Live, I'm downloading Fortnite, everything is absolutely amazing. I've done the first half of the video, I'm set up, I'm ready, I've got my joysticks, I've got my keyboard and mouse, I've got my game downloading, which is free. Things are looking absolutely amazing. Looking at the time, it's about quarter to 10. Happy days. Not long left for Fortnite to download. 
go make a cup of tea, come back in, sit down, game starts up. First thing I do, grab the mouse, try to move the mouse pointer. Hmm. Okie doke. Then I realized it doesn't work in the UI, it only works actually in the game itself. So quickly went on, blah, blah, blah. Keyboard and mouse, playing a bit of Fortnite, a few minutes, absolutely peachy. So right, move all the cameras around, put all the feeds in, plug the Xbox con into the capture card, into the PC so I can stream the stuff so you guys can see what's going on. <sighs> Get all set up, now it's about 10 past 10. Go to start all again, do the intro to the video, so we've got all these things set up, blah, 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 you know, my usual spiel. Go into the game, load it up, grab the mouse as per usual, so I'm here, left-handed. I haven't got a mouse there, but you get the idea. So I've got a left hand there, and I'm doing what I do with my left hand best, gaming, and click on it. Oh, where's the mouse cursor? Uh, yeah, forgot, doesn't work in the UI. Yeah, won't catch me out on that one again. So I made a little subtle joke about it on the video so I didn't look a complete dick. Went back in, pressed the button on the controller, got it going. And here we go, so we're loading up Fortnite. Can't wait to play on my keyboard and mouse, blah, blah, blah. Go into the game, and all of the icons have got those stupid button colours all around them on all the options. So I'm thinking, hmm, I'm sure last time it had the key layouts on it, or left click or right click. So I'm like, all right, play this cool, Michael, play it cool, easy now. So I went in, pressed the start button, I'm thinking, it's gonna come up sooner or later, it's gonna come up with a mouse thing, so I'm there discreetly moving the mouse so it can't be seen on camera, but also disguising my panic, because it's going wrong again. And I gotta go and pick up calf in about half an hour or so, so kind of beads of sweat are forming on the brow. And nothing. Keyboard and mouse, the keyboard works fine. The mouse, nothing. Nada, nicked, nothing. Absolutely, what is going on? So, stop the video, back to the drawing board, reboot the Xbox. Now, if any of you have got an Xbox, you can appreciate how frustrating this is, because the Xbox is not the fastest console in the world. It is kind of like an old Phenom-based PC with a hard disk drive and about four gigs of RAM. It ain't quick. So, rebooting that, Couple of minutes later, you're back in, fire up the game, sign into Xbox Live, Fortnite comes on, you watch the slow ass progress bar go along, all the time you can feel your anus clenching with fear, just in case it isn't gonna work again, and you've gotta be in the car in a quarter of an hour. I can feel my blood pressure going up now, actually. What's my heart rate? It's good job I've got a Fitbit. My resting heartbeat has gone from 60 to 75. I'm getting pissed off already. I'm just talking about it. So Status bar is going across. Go to use the mouse. No, obviously it won't work again in the UI. Press the button, go into the game. Eventually, it goes into the game. And this time, I see the keyboard things on all the options. It's like, yes, result. Press the keyboard button, go into the game, nothing. Long story short, again, got another mouse out. I thought, right, there's my bloody Rio Tora Aorus Z5 review completely out of Kyber. Got another mouse out, my Logitech mouse from the other review I did, the KB270 wireless set. Thought, yeah, no problem, that works on anything. Plug it in, zip, nothing, exactly the same again. This is after another two reboots of the Xbox, logging into Xbox Live, an update for Fortnite, which at this point I should have realized what was going on. So, nothing worked, no mouse, no nothing. So I put it all to bed, frustrated, Went to bed, cried on my pillow for many, many minutes, then I got over it, woke up the next day, had another go, and it still wouldn't work. So I'm like, what the hell is going on here? It was working for like five, ten minutes, and then it stops. So tried again, nothing. Thought, right, I'm going to Google this, because this is bullshit. So I go on, Google it a few times, and apparently at 10 p.m. that evening, the previous evening, Microsoft or actually, more precisely, Epic Games, actually removed the mouse support in the game like that, off the server. No warnings, no Xbox message, no, if you're trying to play on a keyboard or mouse, don't be worried, it's something we've done, we're dicks. No, none of that at all, just me being frustrated for a few hours, and they leave the keyboard support in there still, 
so you can type in messages to the other dickwads who are playing it, but they don't mention anything about the mouse not working. So immediately you obviously think, well, if one works, surely the other should work because it's keyboard and mouse support, but it's not, it's keyboard support. So till this moment, I still haven't retried it. I was tempted to get it set up again for this live stream tonight, but I fear for my sanity. But if any of you play Fortnite on an Xbox with a keyboard and mouse, and you're part of the Mike's unboxing community, please let me know if it works yet or not. So I can go through and do the unboxing of these two lovely little beauties and actually do the video properly without having some kind of coronary arrest. Because that's what's gonna happen. Definitely gonna happen. So that is my weekly story of what went wrong, which is why I've actually ended up doing a couple of how-to videos this week. How to speed up your PC, which was actually quite well received, I think, within uh, the general thing of people. Now I must actually, I have got, I have got to do a couple of shout outs, which I've been asked to do. Um, and I can't remember the name of who it is I've got a shout out to. So I might have to get Calf to do that. I'm gonna quickly have a swig of beer. I recommend it this time, you check out things and I will read some of the chat which is coming at the moment and hopefully answer some of your questions. And what is going on now? I pressed the wrong button again. I always press the wrong button. I am some kind of idiot when it comes to computers, which considering I have a technology channel, it's probably not the best idea. Now, where is the bit where it says pop out chat? I don't know. Pop out chat, pop out chat. So, actually, after I've got my rant out of the way, that was my 15 minute monologue. What is going on, everybody? What is happening? What is popping? What did Santa Claus bring you all? And how do I get this chat to show? <laughs> oh, my days. Right. Now, I think the problem is because I keep on shrinking the text size of my screen, so then I just can't see anything. Right, done. Okay, so that is the one I can press on there. Pop out chat, there we go. I am actually a fully functioning human and Kath is writing stuff on there. Right, so the shout out I had to do, um, oh, can you find out his channel name as well, please? I think it's Mr. H or something. You have to have a look. I do apologize, Kath isn't, she's not great. I might have to fire her, give her the sack. Like Santa Claus. Hey, I got a Christmas joke in on the stream, yes. It's very easy to please myself. I probably said that wrong. So, who have we got in with us tonight? 80s Horror Fan, 88. Good evening, bonjour. Hopefully you're watching lots of uh, classic 80s horror and sci-fi and tech-based movies over this Christmas period. I've got to be honest with you, I am dying, well, dying is probably not the right word. I'm looking forward to sitting down and rolling some cigarettes or creating some cigarettes with our cigarette roller whilst watching Robocop again. I think, or maybe Empire Strikes Back. I don't know, what do you guys think? Empire Strikes Back is probably a good show. I haven't watched that for many years. And I haven't watched TV for many years actually either. So it may have been on TV already this Christmas. Anyway, uh, I, I, I nearly said it, I'm not gonna do it. Uh, did you find the channel name? Yes. So it's uh, MRH channel or Mr. H channel. And it's Mohammed. I can't even read that. React Katak. If I'm pronouncing this completely wrong, I totally apologize. I really do, because, well, it's not my native language sort of thing. And, well, Mohammed's okay, I can get away with that. That's all right, because that, that's something I say frequently. But the other names, I do apologize. But he's got a great little um, YouTube channel, and he reached out to me over the week and said, uh, do you fancy doing some kind of collaboration? And YouTube's a weird place and you think like, yeah, actually that's a really cool idea. I'd love to do some kind of collaboration. But because of obviously the distances involved, it's not like if you've got a shop and a high street and someone comes in and says, oh, do you, do you want to do some work with me or can I do some work for you? It's kind of like, because you're there face to face, but when you're not face to face, even though you've got things like Skype and all that kind of stuff, it's actually really difficult to try and work out what you can collaborate on. So really all I said is at the moment, what I'll do is I'll try and I'll put your links and stuff into my videos and if you do the same and what have you and 
hopefully uh, I can help him to grow in the UK and Europe and he can help me help me to grow in his his regions whether the, I'm, I'm presuming I don't know if it is or not I, I guess it's kind of Asia India all that kind of stuff I honestly don't know and if I sound like a complete imbecile or a moron or whatever all of those things are probably right so <laughs> guilty as charged your honor but you know what I'm saying I, geography has never been my strong point even yesterday I had to google what the neighboring states actually can you tell me people in the good world of chat can you tell me what the neighboring states are of California now there's four neighboring states of California from what I can remember from my drunken haze from last night can you name them for me I'll be interested to see if you can uh, so who else is in there so Aletta Aletta is in good evening hello your good self how are your um, your knockers? Have you did you get them sorted? Did you buy a pair of knockers? We did have a little chat about that. A little bit hot under the collar with that one. Who else have we got? Stuart Rogers. You need bigger cans of beer. Yes, I do, Stuart. Stuart Rogers. That's a new name on the in the community. I've not seen that. Have we seen that name before, Calf? No. Stuart's a newbie. Welcome him, everybody. Hi, Stuart. Bonjour and all that stuff. Uh, Kaf's in the channel, which well, she would be because she's there. Uh, Matthew K889, how you doing? How you doing? That's kind of me doing New York. It, no, I won't do that again. We did. A, we had a quiet Christmas, totally, this year. It was, uh, do you know what? To this moment, now, you're probably going to think that we're complete saddos, but... We have not put up a sing. Oh, I was gonna say we haven't put up a single Christmas decoration, but we kind of have. We put up Christmas cards, so they would be classed as a Christmas decoration because you don't put them up during the summer because that'd be stupid. And we got our disco ball, so that is kind of Christmassy. But other than that, we haven't put up any Christmas decorations, and it's been awesome, amazing, awesome. No Christmas tree to catch on fire, no lights to burn megawatts of electricity. For me, as a complete tight ass, like that is like clenched tight, I'm not spending money on electricity, for, so it's bloody amazing. Happy days. And yeah, it's great. No Christmas decorations. It's been so, so, what's the word? Um, not relief. Um, they're not tranquil. What's the, you know, like when you do something and it's like it sets you free. What's the word? Oh, someone's going to have to let me know. I, I can't remember what it is. But I had a real, it's a real sense of kind of freedom of not having to put up Christmas decorations. Is it? Oh, is it? Whatever the word is, it's that a lot. Right, who else have we got? Uh, Aletta. I could use your Xbox for Target, says Aletta. Target practice. <whistles> I have a new box of 44 Magnum shells for my Ruger. Aletta, I am really scared of you in a kind of nice way. Gen genuinely, I, I actually would want to shoot it to be honest with you. If, if I was allowed to have a gun in the UK and actually fire things, that would be amazing. They should they should totally legalise or whatever it is have kind of um, concealed carry permits. I think is that is that a thing? It kind of sounds like it might be a thing. Just for Xboxes. Just for Xbox users, concealed carry. So you can take your Xbox into the garden and just unload all over it. Unload your gun, kind of. Aletta's got a Glock as well. I oh, just, I'm scared, genuinely scared. Aletta, do you have one of those YouTube channels where you're like a, a kind of farm girl where you're shooting stuff? I'm sure I've seen that, I'm sure that's a thing. I didn't imagine it, did I? There is actually a thing, they do that in America, don't they? It's an American thing where you get sort of Cowgirls in hot pants firing M16s and stuff in M4A1s. I'm sure that's a thing. I definitely didn't. Mem did I? Did I? I'm sure I've seen that. We've seen that, haven't we? Yes, it was the American gun people and they were shooting at those signs and they did the jingle bells. No, the do 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 that thing on tin with a machine gun. I, sh I shared it on Facebook. I'm sure I did. 
Right, Stuart says, Hi Mike, Xbox only accepts polling rates of 125 hertz. If your keyboard and mouse is 500, 1000, first plug them into PC, set them to 125 hertz, and they will work. Now that is actually a part that I missed out because you're absolutely right. And this particular mouse has got a polling rate, or polling, polling rate, polling, polling of a thousand hertz or one kilohertz. Um, so yeah, that was definitely in the back of my mind, but it did work initially, but then it failed. And I did actually get then go put the plug, put the mouse in back into the laptop, change the polling rate to, I think 80 was I think the lowest I could get it to. So I tried 80, uh, let it save the settings and then plugged it in again and still it, it wasn't having it. But yeah, you're totally right. There is a 125 thing thing. All I want to, I need to go up to DV. DV, hi. I've missed something, am I? Hey bro, I don't know if you see this. Thanks for helping me get my NVIDIA driver back. Your video helped a lot. You are welcome, sir. I'm glad it was helpful. Oh, I have interest. I'm kind of, well, yeah, I am sort of. I'm trying to work out what NVIDIA cards are causing the most problems because they are causing massive, massive problems on systems. But can you tell me what graphics card it was, what model it is? Aletta has a beer today. Cheers. But Aletta, you're so hardcore, you are probably drinking it from a jerry can, aren't you? <laughs> I shouldn't put my hands like that. <laughs> Forget that bit. Uh, moving on. Oh, Kathy did it. Shout out to Mohammed Raha. Yeah, from MRH channel. Hopefully he's watching. I don't know what the time zone is over there. It's probably a little bit off. Atheist horror fan would really like to own a gun. I totally would. Ah, here we are. Stuart's come back with the uh, the neighbouring states. So we had Arizona, Nevada, Oregon, and there was one more, wasn't there? I think was there another one? I'm sure they said four. Although it was Google, so it's probably wrong. Welsh Tony, what have you walked into? I don't know, was I going like that? I was like eating a foot long. <laughs> uh, Welsh Tony is in the same position. The, tu the stream started 24 minutes ago. Well, technically it didn't because I think I was about 10 minutes late anyway because we went shopping and beer. Oh, and almond, no, what are they? Yeah. Almond, almond cherry bakewells. No, they, cherry. no cherries. No, almond bakewells, that was it. We got some almond bakewells from Tesco. They were reduced to 12p each. So we had to get four of them, obviously, because you have one, you want another one, so, and there's two of us. So for 50p, we consumed multiple, multiple calories, and it was so good. And almonds are actually good for you. They're beneficial against cancer and stuff, so eat bakewells. And safe food, not allergies. Yeah, and I'm saving the nut allergy people from that horrible fate. A letter's drinking Guinness Extra Stout via a funnel and a five liter jerry can. Just glugging away there. Whilst shooting rodents, no doubt. And probably, I don't know, decorating her toenails with a blowtorch. Proper hardcore. They come out of a rather nice shade of black. <laughs> oh dear. I'll tell you what, I don't know what I'm thinking of. I do. I, well, I do. Right. Oh, Cheers, everybody. Merry bloody Christmas. <sighs> Salute. That's better. If you haven't had that before, lager or a medium beer with um, Captain Morgan in it. Amazing, absolutely amazing. And it gets you proper wrecked, as they say with the kids. Uh, where is he sticking all this stuff he's using at once? He only has two hands and feet. 
A real man only drinks pure vodka, 100ml shots only. Um, yeah, I'm not a real man. I'm actually a hologram. So unfortunately, pure vodka would actually ruin my programming and I would dissolve. Where is he sticking? Tony, are you referring to my keyboard and mouse? This was for my... Oh. I got too many computers. Hopefully, fingers crossed, well, not fingers crossed, but someone come out to have a look at one of the computers I'm selling today, and is a, a lovely little kid who's getting into gaming, and he's had an Xbox or something, now he wants to become into the PC master race, so he's going for a gaming PC, and hopefully he'll be uh, coming and taking that away tomorrow, which I'm totally stoked for, because it's really good to see younger kids now getting a PC and getting away from consoles. And the thing is, like he could be outside playing basketball or baseball or football, but there's, it's like there's like stuff in the air and there's like acid rain and the sun gives you skin cancer so you just want to stay inside and play computer games it's much safer and your parents can keep an eye on you gaming kids is the way forward right what else have we got <laughs> mike the doctor from voyager i was thinking more like uh, rimmer from red dwarf <laughs> Oh dear. Uh, Jacob Williams says, you are gay. Um, you'll find that you are is actually spelled U O, uh, sorry, Y O U apostrophe R E, then gay. If you're gonna cuss someone or call someone something, at least use like English or whatever language you wanna use, but at least spell it properly. Look at my dog, Mike would stream Fortnite. I did try to stream Fortnite. I, that is what this video was about, really. And I wanted to stream Fortnite in some way, shape, or form on the Xbox, but without having to use this monstrosity. Keyboard and mouse. Master Race stuff. He's wearing it right now. Whee! There, everybody, is the Super Chat Disco Ball. Boo, 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 boo. So when we get a super chat, that is what happens. The light comes on, so I know someone's giving me a super chat, and I can look at it and say, Sky Stalker, it is indeed disco time. How are you doing? How's it going in Canada, North of America, just up from the Texas border? Um, I gotta try and remember, what was the location in Canada? Was it Ontario? No. British Columbia, no. Vancouver, yes. Ah, yeah, yeah, you got it at the same time. I almost. Oh, a letter. I love you. That is a great, great comeback. How are you doing? Oh, I did it again. I do apologise. <laughs> uh, so, Jacob Williams, um, actually, for your information stating that someone is gay is not actually a slur. Maybe in some kind of retarded place that you may live or come from or hang out in, that may be classed as a slur, but it's like 2018, nearly 2019, and to call someone gay these days actually is probably a compliment, so thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'm not, obviously, because I'm married and I have a wife and children, and Kath is not a beard, at least not to my knowledge. So, um, yeah, we're all good, but thanks for the compliment anyway. And thanks for a letter for uh, standing up as well, being counted. Happy days. Oh, at least he got his uh, two minutes mention. I suppose it's easier to call someone something like that or to say something which is potentially offensive. It's easier to super chat. Mike is very accepting, but not in a gay way. <laughs> Welsh Tony says we want calf. It's true. Back in the day, being gay meant you were happy. Says Sky Stalker. Yeah, that's true. And I think it kind of went a little bit skew for us in the UK. There was a a, a program which was about a department store, Grayson's Department Store. What was that 
Are you being served? And there was a, a camp um, manager. manager or assistant manager or something in the shop. And he would always say, oh, it's a very gay day. But because he was very camp and was potentially on the homosexual side, probably, maybe, that was kind of what the, it kind of made that real link in the public conscience, and especially in the UK anyway. That gay was then associated more so with being gay rather than feeling gay. That's probably not explained very well. This is probably going to go really wrong. Right. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Look at my dog. If you call Mike gay, at least send in a super chat. That sounds absolutely fine. I'm, I'm absolutely fine with that. Yeah, I am gay with happiness. And I'm gay at the happiness of nearly getting... How many subscribers are we at, Calf? We are currently at... 6,433 subscribers. Oh, it'd be amazing to get 7,000 for our anniversary, which is the 20th of January, 21st of January, sorry. That would be amazing. So, um, yeah, if anyone else wants to come in and call me uh, gay, nonce, whatever, any kind of weird thing, feel free. Just click subscribe and don't forget to click on the chime button and you'll be notified of all my future gayness. Joe. Hi, Joe, how you doing? Do we know Joe? Yeah. Joe, are you a newbie? Are you new here? <laughs> 80s horror fan. Being gay, bi, straight, trans affects nothing. Well, maybe the way you walk. Yeah, that's very true. Because I can't walk in those hills. I don't know how other people who walk in hills. I was going to say I don't know how women do it, but that would be possibly deemed as sexist because men can wear heels too, you know? I've seen Kenny Everett. I know this. Look at my dog. Look at my dog. Whenever I read that, it reminds me of someone who, who is very dear to me, who passed away um, almost two years ago now, actually. Yeah, it would be two years, wouldn't it? Who? Mike Povey. No, it was a year. Was it a year? Seems like longer. Yeah, yeah one of my friends, that, that was his, one of his kind of catchphrases or that he was known by. Um, basically, he would say, F my dog. That was his thing. So if something went wrong, it'd be, oh, my dog. So whenever I see your name, look at my dog, it just reminds me of him. And he was, a, he was such a, a, an amazing character and he was totally, totally missed. So uh, Mr. Povey, if you're, uh, if you're watching up there in uh, cyber heaven, God bless you. Sorry. Although actually, if he was in the afterlife, knowing him, he would probably be here messing around with electrics. Uh, Eddie, oh, Eddie the Eagle. That was an amazing film. No, it was, it was one of those, uh, yeah, Joe, rip, it, rip in peace. He definitely would rip in peace. He, uh, he was an absolute character. What's what you <laughs> wish for? Yeah, he probably, actually, if there, if there is an afterlife, Mike, if you're out there watching over, do us a, do us a power cut or at least knock out some of the lights. Or make the disco ball go on for 24 hours. That'd be awesome. That'd save me buying lottery tickets anyway. Right, so what else are we going to talk about? Let's talk about some actual PC stuff for a little while. I was kind of thinking about doing some good and bad stuff that's happened this year with PC stuff, but kind of everybody's been doing that, and it's lame because that's what they've all been doing all year, really. And it's like a yearly recap. I know. Do you, do you want to see a yearly recap? I... This year has been such a crap year, to be honest with you. I would rather not recap it, but... YouTube. Yeah, the YouTube's gone well, though, in all fairness. Oh, bless you, Tony shared a video. Shared the videos on the Facebook group today. May have got you some subs. Oh, that's cool. Now, Joe's asked a very good question here. How do tech channels afford the stuff? 
Now, if you mean tech channels like, well, this tech channel, the way we afford stuff is we buy stuff off on Amazon, <laughs> and we probably use it, and then we probably send it back. That's my DeWalt drill, which is going back. Um, a lot of it is stuff we actually use, to be honest with you. We, we buy it out of our own money. It's stuff that we use, like the Rio Toro stuff. Um, it's used cases, power supplies, processors, like the stuff like the Athlon, whatever that is, the 200G in it. That was bought off Amazon pretty much when it came out. The Hive Active plug was a good deal. Now, actually, that's a good th another thing. If you want stuff for a tech channel or you want just stuff for free, excuse me, um, subscribe to Kath's YouTube channel, which is Smart Shop, which you can find linked off the bottom of this video, possibly. I think Smart Shop is listed on there, isn't it? If not, just search it, Smart Shop. You'll see the logo. It looks like a, a, um, a potentially a woman carrying a handbag. It could be a man. We're not stating sexes here because that's not a thing anymore. It's a, it's a transgender, bisexual, homosexual carrying a bag, okay? If anyone asks, and he has got a limp. He's not looking funny because he's been, uh, none of that's happened, he's just got a limp. So, subscribe to Shop Smart and also follow Shop Smart on Facebook and you will see the deals that I and Kath get to see. So we literally go through every day looking for deals we post them, some of, the thing, some of the things we buy, most of it is on Facebook, so if you follow the page, you'll get to see them. But we, get, we do get some ridiculous deals. We get stuff for free, we get stuff like 75% off, 50% off, just really, really good deals. And yeah, that is what we do. We look out for deals. We, we like to keep things as cheap as possible, which is why we buy the stuff we do. Now, it would be really nice to be sponsored by Intel, AMD, whatever, get stuff sent in, review it, but that is why on this channel you don't see those high-end parts because A, I don't have the money to afford that kind of stuff at the moment and probably even if I did have the money I would still be hesitant because I don't genuinely believe it offers that kind of bang for buck that we want. Now yeah, if you've got unlimited money or a relative like passed on or whatever and you've got a load of money, absolutely fine, knock yourself out, get the latest and greatest. But realistically, now I was thinking this today actually, just to go off on a slight tangent. I was doing some stuff with the PC that I built. Remember the one I did with the Gigabyte? With actually with that processor, the 200GE. Now that is kind of left over at the moment and I'm thinking, well, what do I do with it? And then I was thinking, well, if I do something with it, I need to replace it, what am I gonna replace it with? And that gave me a real conundrum because I honestly don't know what I would replace it with value for money wise which is a, it's a really hard thing to do at the moment. So processor prices are reasonable, they're not bad. RAM prices are coming down, they're set to come down another 10% in January. Graphics cards are kind of settling down a bit, the AMD stuff is becoming super cheap. The new stuff from Nvidia from CEX in January is probably gonna drop things a little bit more. SSDs are basically being given away. Cases are still kind of holding their value. Some of them are actually on the up, I've noticed. Um, peripherals in general are relatively cheap. So it is actually a pretty good time to buy stuff if you're buying just behind the curve. So you can get really good value for money. A, a, a decent 1080p graphics card, which might even do 1440, you can easily do now for 150 pounds, 140 pounds brand new. Whereas this time last year, or even earlier in the year, you'd be looking at 150 pounds for a, a used GTX 970, something of that kind of, that sign of power. So the prices have actually come down really good. But yeah, going back to what I was saying, what do you build? What a PC these days, even an entry level one, like the 200G, would do pretty much anything you want of it. It plays Fortnite, plays Counter-Strike, plays uh, Battlefield, all those kinds of titles with a reasonable graphics card. There isn't any software or any program or any game that is sort of nudging me and saying, go on, go on, go on, play me. Now, back in the day, you have things like the Batman games, Arkham Asylum, Arkham Knight, all those kinds of things, which really pushed the boundaries of what the hardware could do. 
which gave you a kind of almost a kind of like a uh, justifiable upgrade path. Right, I need four cores, I need eight cores, I need 16 gigs of RAM, I need that graphics card. But now it's, the games aren't doing that. Pretty much most games now are being written for the lowest common denominator to get people involved. Things like Fortnite. Fortnite will essentially run on a potato if you need it to, but if you want to, it'll scale really well with good hardware and good graphics cards and all that kind of stuff. So you can spend less and still play these games and still use these apps and still do video editing or edit your photos. What, there's nothing driving the market forward at the moment, which is a real shame, which especially for me being an enthusiast about PC stuff, I really, really want to kind of have something new and exciting to make me want to build a PC to a certain spec, but just in anything at all. Just, uh, I don't know what your thoughts are on it. Let, let me know in the comments or let Kath know and she'll pass on to me. But I think it's a real shame that there's nothing out there at the moment which is really uh, really kind of pushing things forward. We need something something hardcore like a, a new Far Cry or a new um, Crisis game. A new Crisis game, which is, by the way, is not going to happen. Crisis now on PC and console is over. You will not see another Crisis game. So there isn't anything going to be there which is kind of... The will it run crisis scenario it's not that's not going to happen we don't have those games anymore but anyway i die oh save myself there right You're ranting. i am ranting i do apologize i've done it again do you do you people mind if i rant about these things sometimes because sometimes i just feel i need to get it off my chest because it is it's really frustrating as someone who's passionate about pc stuff and loves getting involved in tinkering and finding the new stuff that's coming out Everything is just rehashes of old stuff, just incrementally faster. I'm going to read some of these things a minute, and I'm probably missing stuff. Uh, thanks, dog. <laughs> Look at my dog has a razor, keyboard, and mouse, and thought it was a good idea to jump on the bandwagon. Okay. Skystalker subscribes. Oh, they all subscribe against your channel. Yes, good on you, everybody. Calf deserves it. She were, tell you what, no word of a lie. Like, Calf's got a full time job and also doing what she does with the channel, which is kind of a full time job in itself as well. Plus, she does her own stuff on her own channel to try and build the numbers for us as a group. So, yeah, she totally deserves subscribers, views, and shares. So, please, a Christmas gift to Calf. Subscribe share some videos, go onto Facebook, like the page, share the page, and let's, let's get some serious numbers going, because that would be fantastic. Joe has a question. Where can I get a cheap Windows 10 key? Um, okay, so, actually, is there anything else in there? No, I will quick, I will do a quick one on this. So, Windows 10 key, you can get, cheap from uh, Voidu is quite a good place to get them from, as is uh, G2Play. G2Play will be slightly dearer, normally anywhere in around the sort of 10 to 20 pounds mark. Um, I'm not sure where you're based, but obviously just do the math and uh, translate that to whatever your dollarage is or rupees or whatever it is you're spending. Um, it's from England, I think. Oh, from England, in that case, yeah, rupees. Depending where you are, it could be, actually I'm not gonna go there. Um, yeah, I personally, if you don't need Windows to be activated and you're quite happy to run it unactivated, then um, you don't actually need a license key. You can install it, the pro version, install without a key, and it'll just have the thing in the bottom corner saying, please activate Windows. It won't let you stop doing anything. You can still install games, you can still play games at exactly the same frame rates. It doesn't hold you back in any way, shape or form. The only thing it will stop you doing is obviously using Microsoft services, such as um, OneDrive. Um, I think that's pretty much the most of it. You can't change your background. Personalization is pretty much out of the question. But if you don't mind that, and you just wanna use Windows as is, and you use Gmail, or you've got, um, Google storage or whatever it may be, then you can do it that way. That's, that's a, a totally a totally 
it's not justified, but it can be done. You don't have to buy a license, but you can still do that and then buy a license. eBay is always a good one to look at. Um, there are so, so many sellers on eBay. So you kind of, you take your choice with that in, uh, for the sake of three pounds or four pounds, if, if it lasts you a year and you have to get another one, is it the end of the world? It's still a damn sight cheaper than a, a real license, which is a hundred pounds or so. So, um, yeah, I don't know why they haven't reduced that, but anyway, ho hopefully that gives you some idea. Uh, when we're looking, oh wow, I've missed out loads of talking, which is probably good for you guys and girls. It runs on a p iPhone, so basically a potato from Eat My Dog. Oh, that must be referring back to the uh, Fortnite thing. Great. Uh, Skystalker, yeah, there are plenty of videos on getting a cheap Windows 10 key. There, are, I think, did I? I think I actually did one. Did I do one? I didn't do one. Wow. Thank you very much. I will make a video on how to obtain a very cheap Windows license along with links. And hopefully, I think there's, yeah, I'll do a UK version, a US version, and I'll do a global version. So anyone who wants a Windows 10 key, uh, definitely can sort that out. Uh, d d d look at my dog. I would love to build a two thousand dollar pound PC, but there is a bottleneck in my PC, my bank account. <laughs> Perfect. That is absolutely amazing. I I totally agree. The thing is, okay. Look at my dog. <laughs> I never tire of saying that. Sorry, calf. Can I get a refill? Actually, for those of you who started late, can, I don't know if you can see that. That was a present for my daughter this year for Christmas, and it says, "Mike's unboxing." It's not going to focus, is it? I'll move out of the way. Is it focusing? No. no? Oh, she's gone. Where did you go? Oh, there you are. <laughs> it basically says, Mike's unboxing reviews on how to. Merry Christmas. Love, Angel, I think. Can you do it on your camera? Bless her. Camera. Don't worry, it's all right. I'm <laughs> It's like being in a hotel. What was I going to say? Um, yes, that was it. So, £2,000, right, okay. This is actually a question for all of you. £2,000, $2,000, 2,000 Canadian rubles or whatever they used, dollars, etc. What, if you had $2,000 and that was it, and you were told you got $2,000, build a PC, but you don't have to spend it all. And whatever you don't spend, you can keep and put in your back pocket. Would you spend the entire $2,000 to the very last kind of drop and build the PC as best you possibly could? Or would you cheap out, spend maybe five, 600 and keep the change? That there is a dilemma. And I'd, I actually, I would be genuinely interested. Now I would hope being what this channel is all about, which is basically saving money and doing things on the cheap where possible and buying stuff kind of wisely, I would hope that the majority of you would spend maybe half the money, maybe slightly less, or around about half, and keep the rest and stick it in your back pocket. But let me know, I wanna see in the comments what you would do. What would you do with 2,000 pounds? If you had the 2,000 pounds, what setup would you get? Most of us probably have, well, I personally have never specced up a PC for that amount of money, because I know I'm never gonna buy one. I've kind of watched videos where people have done it, and I kind of get the impression of what you can get for your money, I don't think I would. I genuinely don't think I would. But saying that, if you went for maybe the um, the HTPC kind of side of things for Intel, or maybe <coughs> went with the Threadripper for AMD, three hundred dollars or three hundred pounds for a motherboard, three four to four hundred pounds for a processor, you could burn through that money quite quickly. But again, would you? Would you really want to? Would that be a thing you'd do, or would you keep the money? to pay bills, buy shopping, Joe's whatever. He's only 13. Joe's 13? Oh, good night, Joe. Bless you, mate. Right, okay, so I think I've pretty much said my piece there. What have I missed? I've missed so much stuff. 
I can't. Where's Brightex stuff? I haven't he's seen him. He's not on there. Oh, right. Ah, I got you. Brightex actually uploaded a video today where to get a, a Windows 10 Pro key. Oh, bloody hell. Right, well, you lot can all be witness that I said I was going to do that video before I read that. I didn't know that was going to happen. Because last time, um, I think I did my NVIDIA driver fix and Brightech actually commented on it and said, oh, I'd just done that video. And it's like, honestly, I didn't know. It was just like great minds think alike. So, damn it, he's beat me to it. Although, to be fair, he has got a half a million subscribers, so they're probably slightly more deserving at the moment. Never mind. I'll still do it anyway. I'll do it with a slight uh, little twist. I might do it drunk. That'd be interesting. How to buy Windows 10 drunk <coughs> without buying yourself a tie bride? Or insert geographical region here, bride. Uh, da -da. Wow, Joe. 13. That's amazing. Actually, it's, it's really nice to have uh, younger kids involved. I do worry that I might say something which might be potentially like a bit dodgy, but. Well, that's YouTube for you. It, Actually, there's a thing, isn't it, where you click on it and it says, are you 18? Maybe. I don't know. Hey-ho. Good night, Joe. God bless you. Actually, what are you doing up at 11 o'clock if you're 13? <coughs> She's been in bed hours ago. Christmas holidays. Oh, yeah, Christmas holidays. Oh, yeah, I used to remember that. When I was young, Christmas holidays, you'd st stay up late and listen to the Dave Barrett phone in or late night love. Wow. A letter would spend the entire 2000. Bam. Good one, bro. Okay. Ninja 47. Ah, Ninja 47. Hello. I haven't seen you for a little while. Should I build a 1155 system or AMD FX 6300 system? I can get a cheap FX 6300 motherboard and 16 gigabytes of DDR3, but I also have an 1155 motherboard already. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Right. What would I do? What would Mike do? Actually, someone I worked with was actually going to get that made up on t-shirts because that was the thing that they was instilled into him. So he was a bit of a dipstick. So he'd come to me and say, Mike, what do I do now? What should I do? Or what? And I'd say, what would Mike do? And he basically took that on and it became a thing for a little while. That was uh, Matt Blake. What would Mike do? And he used to actually genuinely think, what would Mike do in this situation? He actually became pretty good after that. Although he smokes a lot of weed, so. Moving on. Right, Ninja. Right, okay. Should I. Now, this is an interesting thing, actually. Now that games, and actually applications for that matter, are becoming very, very multi threaded, the old 10 year old AMD FX processors, especially the uh, 8350, which you can pick up for about £50 or less, will actually give things like the Ryzen 3 2200G a really good run for their money. And being that you can overclock the FX8300 range like ridiculously on air coolers, wow, then um, yeah, the, the FX range is actually coming into its own now, like 10 years on, it's actually starting to show what it was intended to do now that things are becoming multi-threaded. So, also with the FX range, now this is a bit technical, but I'll go into it very, very, very quickly. Now, the, the way that the FX range worked is you had two kind of physical cores, but one in Integer, or whatever they call it. So, if you disable, say on the eight core model, if you disable four of the cores, or park them, it actually runs like an absolute dream because all four cores have got complete access to the Integer and the cache and all that sort of stuff. So it thinks it's a, it's a proper quad-core CPU and you don't have all that kind of mismatch of stuff going through the different threads. So if you can get yourself a 8320E, which was the low power version, that is an absolute monster. You can overclock the hell out of that thing and they run amazingly. Um, I would say the other side, the Intel side, the 1155 setup, you can get some seriously good chips for that. 
Um, things like the, let me think, the 2500K is a fantastic chip and pretty much blows that out of water. Uh, if you can get the 20, is it 2700K, 26K, the i7 one, that again is an awesome processor. If you can get it cheap enough, then that really is a good CPU, but it depends what you're going to pay for it. So um, it depends what you're doing. It really does. It really does depend what you're doing. Hmm. I would. Uh, I would be. The FX sixty three hundred is probably not quite enough these days because that would effectively be a triple core processor. For gaming, I would probably go the Intel route. If it's going to be a multi-purpose PC, maybe go with the AMD. That is actually a really tough call. And the more I think about it, the actual, the more difficult that decision would be. But saying that, if you've got the motherboard already, um, yeah, if, if you've got the motherboard already and it's a pretty decent board, then get down to CEX or get on eBay and pick up a dirt cheap i7 or i5 and uh, yeah, you'd have a, a killer little system. So hopefully that would, <laughs> Skystalker, I would spend every dime so is it something to do with you people on that side of the uh, Atlantic? Spend, spend, spend. I, I kind of get it. I would, in theory, that's, I have a really, really difficult time letting go of money and taking risks in spending things kind of frivolously. I think that's probably my downfall. It's good in some respects because I get to kind of, I save money but it would at some points be really nice just to splurge it and just go crazy. Hmm. Maybe that's going to be my New Year's resolution to just go balls to the wall and just buy stuff. And then I can review it. But then I feel like I'm losing some of my integrity because then it's not all about saving money. But then I suppose if it's value for money, I can spend more and get value for money, then that could work. It might be difficult to do, but I can definitely try it. So maybe that's something we can do. <laughs> oh dear. Sorry, just reading that. Yeah, see, Tony, Tony is in the same boat as me. I think it's I think it's a very British thing, actually, isn't it? To save money. Or very, yeah, British, English, British. Scottish, Welsh, English, yeah, English. English, we do like to save money. We're very conservative in our nature, in general. I think that's been instilled into us for a long, long time. But yeah, I think I... Uh, actually, Tony would say that as well because he's uh, recently had a baby. So obviously you've got those extra expenses and you've bought a house. So you've got money coming out of holes you didn't know you had. So you probably would want to keep some of the money in reserve just in case. It's a family thing, isn't it? You, when you've got your family, to, you've got to have a little bit in reserve just in case things go pear-shaped. So, a letter, I would spend it all and wait, but I'd wait for the next generation of Ryzen and Navi. Now, that is actually a good point. Now, because I'm I'm going to sell off a couple of my PCs I've got in the house and try and refresh things a little bit. Should I go for the sales, the New Year's sales, or wait a little bit longer, maybe into February, and seeing what comes out of CES and all the uh, electric sort of expos? Because Ryzen and Navi, there's going to be some announcement. <coughs> so, hmm. Yeah, it's a really, it's a really, really difficult thing to do. Again, I don't want to buy something and then find out a couple of weeks later that it's obsolete or it's not as good a value as I thought it was. Car. Yeah, like my car. Um, That's the only Christmas decoration. Yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah, sorry, Kath just reminded me. I was saying earlier that we haven't got any Christmas decorations, but at the moment, our BMW, the dashboard looks like Christmas. Because pretty much every warning light you could possibly imagine is on. And one of the headlight bulbs is out. So I've got to put the front fog lamps on and the driving lamps. So that gives us the blue and the green. The brake warnings are on, which are amber. 
and we've got uh, brake fluid, which is yellow, and the handbrake light, which is red, and the puncture warning, which is yellow. So we got, like, basically, it's an RGB dashboard, just what I've always wanted. Go BMW. And the worst thing is, if it was an older BMW, it would be so much easier because it would just be like one ABS light. And I could just take the dashboard out, remove the bulb, job done. MOT. Boom. Get in. Anyway, moving on. So, make the video, Mike. Yeah, still do it. Yeah, let's do the Windows 10 video. And I'll give that damn Brightech 09 a run for his money. Biatch. Is he in there? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Look at my dog, Roy. Mike runs a Christian stream, no swearing allowed. Okay. Um, it's not technically a Christian stream, although I suppose I was born... Actually, I've never been christened, so technically I'm not a Christian, but I lived within a Christian house and community, so I suppose I'm more Christian than not Christian, but... I am, um, I'm multi-denominational. I'm like religion fluid. F is that a thing? Can I change religion? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna be religion fluid. That's a, that's a good way to be. Oh yeah, Calf, that's a good point. C. McKnight, Tony probably would be able to answer this. No, he hasn't seen him. Oh shit, I mean, I have to put some money in the swear box. <laughs> yeah, see my night, well, see my night, if you're watching this and you're catching up and you're, I don't know, whatever's going on, we are thinking of you and we do miss seeing you on the streams and on the uh, Discord. God bless and all that. Oh, that was a really Christian thing to say. <laughs> anyway, moving on. You should do a video on stupid Gumtree eBay ads. I've seen tubers do it and it makes me laugh every time. 80s horror fan, do you know what? That was actually something that I was so, so wanting to do because almost every day I go onto the Facebook groups. Now, for those of you that don't know what Facebook is, basically, where have you been? Because one in every two people in the planet is on Facebook, literally. They've done research and stuff, which they did themselves for their own shareholders. So take that with a. Uh, large pinch of salt. So anyway, yeah, Facebook groups. Now Facebook groups are basically what I would consider to be the kind of like the, the scourge of the universe. So you get a lot of really skanky ass people on there basically trying to sell a pile of dog shit for as much money as they can possibly get without getting arrested, which is fine, they can do that to the unsuspecting, but at the same time, you've got a lot of people on there who are actually totally genuine, honest, everyday people, or just people trying to make a living, who's selling stuff on there, which is actually like genuine good stuff at proper prices. But because you get these complete dicks selling what is essentially like a tower with a brick inside of it and saying, yeah, it's fine, it's, it'll play all the latest games at 4K, which obviously it won't, but because they say it in their advert, people think, oh yeah, 4K PC, 50 quid, I want one. So they'll go and buy that, and then they'll try and get their money back, and it's like, you've got no chance, because it's a, it's a eBay, it's like um, a Facebook thing, it's a person to person, it's not a business, so it's like buyer beware. And most of these scammers know it, and quite often the scammers will actually buy something crap resell it as something better and then actually try and buy it back and resell it again it's just like a cycle it's really 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 weird now um random gaming and hd did a video on it recently about a pc that he got scammed on that he actually recognized because it was one that he sold years ago that was so say upgraded and just goes to show that on facebook groups you have got to be super super careful but you do, you read through these things and you can actually see the picture of the PC. And the picture of the PC is like some beige box. And it's got like the side panel missing. And on the back you can see it's got like two PS2 ports. There isn't a single USB 3 port on the thing. So it's at least 10 to 15 years old. And they're like, gaming PC. We'll play Fortnite at high resolution, 60 frames per second. And it's like, really? 
Do you think that is really likely that it's going to play Fortnite? Do you think it's even going to load up Fortnite, let alone play the damn game? But they sell it and they put all this spiel on there saying, oh, yeah, it does all this in benchmarks. I can send you benchmarks on an email or I can take a picture of the screen. It's like, I can take a picture of my back garden and tell you it's in, Fr in uh, France or something. It isn't, but I can tell you that in a picture. I can edit anything. <sighs> anyway, there are some real buttheads and douchebags on there. And um, yes, that is something I would definitely, definitely like to do to review. Because I know that um, oh, Science Studio, or whatever his name is, I think it's Science Studio, he does it on um, like Craigslist ads. So I would actually like, because no, I don't think anyone actually does it at the moment on Facebook groups. So maybe that is something I would quite like to do, because it, it is actually hilarious. But I'm a bit concerned that if I do it, because of having to blur stuff out and all that, whether it looks a bit crap, uh, maybe I'll do it as a live stream and just be drunk and then if I show people's stuff it's like well sorry my bad I was drunk that that was my f it was my fault I was drunk officer please don't arrest me or take me to court because that sucks so maybe that is a good idea it is something I've actually looked at I really really have and I would love to do it because it does crack me up but I know what would happen I'd just get too into it and I would get actually quite nasty and aggressive but anyway moving on phil dennis philip dennis in the house phil says hi mike and calf hope you had a fab xmas yeah it was totally fab it actually was really we actually have a good christmas this year we haven't put any decorations up as i said earlier and it's been absolutely phenomenal and what's that word i still can't think of that damn word what's the word Liberating, it's very liberating not to put out Christmas decorations and not actually give a shit about anything. It's fantastic. It's like, oh, we didn't even do like Christmas dinner shopping. We're literally like, right, what have we got in the freezer? Work after Christmas Eve. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, we better buy a joint of meat. We got some potatoes, we got some Yorkshire puddings. No, we haven't. We, we got some stuff. We haven't got parsnips, but uh, what the hell. Screw the parsnips. And just did it. It was so, so liberating. Screw all that stuff that they tell you, Tesco and Asda and Sainsbury's and all those other a-holes, that you need this fantastic spread of Christmas dinner and you need these decorations and you need a million bottles of wine and all that sort of stuff. F them, F them all. Just do it, do what you wanna do. Have a have fish and chips for Christmas dinner. Screw them, just enjoy yourself. That's what it's about. Anyway, moving on. Thank you, Phil. Hopefully you had a great Christmas as well and I uh, hope that lovely wife of yours is doing well. And, what, oh, actually, what's this? If you get a moment, could you do an intro on to overclocking of CPUs? Now, actually, I did do, I think I've already done a brief intro of that, which was the uh, AM1-based motherboard, the 5350 processor, which I did a little bit on. Maybe if you tell me what processor you're trying to overclock, I will um, see if I can do one specific to that kind of setup. But very nice to hear from you, Phil. Hope you are very, very well. You lovely, lovely man. Uh, look at my dog. Hey, is Epic Handouts. You've gone down too far now. You? I've gone too far. <laughs> oh my God, I've gone too far. cheap on most things, but PC and guns are worth it. I've completely missed all the all the chat here. <coughs> Ninja's thinking the i5 2500. That is the one to get, or get the K if you can. Go to if Ninja if you're in the UK, try CEX because they've got a sale on and their stuff's really cheap, and it's like two pounds for postage or something. And actually, they, they come with like a weird two-year guarantee, which for i5 is pretty good because they don't last the motherboards and stuff like that. So definitely worth doing. Aletta spends money on PCs and guns. Well, yep. That's probably cheap. Tony got offended because I called him English. Oh my God. Another bloody snowflake. Come on, Tony. <laughs> You're Scottish anyway. You're living in Wales. <laughs> That's split personality. Yeah. Come here. Technically, where you live actually was English years ago until they drew up the borders. So you kind of live in ex-England. <laughs> He's gonna freak out now, I can't wait. 
Ninja 47, should I get that cheap CIT case or go with the Cylon Mini for 36 quid to go with the i5 build? The Cylon Mini is actually a pretty cool case. I quite like that. But um, also, if Ninja, I'm not sure if you're in the United Kingdom or not, rather than England or Wales or Scotland, but, or Wales, did I say Wales? <laughs> the, um, what's it called? Where am I looking? Oh yeah, down there. The, uh, the Colink Stronghold is actually really good and they've dropped down to about 29.99. That is an awesome case. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he's, he is Scottish. I'll call you the new. Born in Kirkcaldy. <laughs> Full house on lights. Dashboard. Oh, yeah, it is. I've all, no, actually, there is one missing the airbag light. The airbag light's not on yet, but if I crash it, then that's easily rectified. RGB keyboard behind. Actually, yeah. RGB Christmas keyboard right there, people. Hey, look at that. That's technology right there, peeps. RGB Christmas keyboard. And the mic's unboxing and how to mug, which you can get from the merch store, which is www.micsunboxing.tmail.com. Yes, I remembered it. It's probably wrong, so don't go there. It might be a scam site. If <laughs> if it is, give them some money anyway. It's Christmas. Easy way to fish that. Yeah, idiot likes duct tape. Do you know what? I was talking to Kath about the duct tape, and I said if I had some of that black PVC tape like we use on the PCs, if I stuck that all over that entire bit of dashboard, that would fly through the MOT. Which I am actually tempted to do because if I take it to one of those like really dipshit backstreet garages, we're like, oh. Where's the petrol go? It'd be great. It passed straight away. I'll give it a try. <laughs> Whilst Tony's going to do the Windows 10 video in Scottish, and he's already recording it, and he's going to upload it in 10 minutes. <laughs> you could do it as a live stream. That would be impressive. Yeah, duck take it. Duck. I'll tell you, they've just brought in new MOT rules in the UK for in January, and it's like, what was it? It was something stupid, yeah, like a tiny bit of smoke out of the exhaust, but it was uh, something else which was ridiculous, like, it's something to do with a jagged edge on a plastic trim, because it might hurt a pedestrian. It's like, really? Screw pedestrians. Think about emissions and stuff like that. They actually make a difference. Yeah, so if someone gets scuffed up on the side of your car, just it's like Carmageddon out there. It's all right. Look at my dog. Mike has his whole dashboard lit up. Warning lights. Never heard of them, mate. Oh, look at my dog. I tell you, actually, did I take a picture? Yeah, go over to my Facebook, Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To on Facebook, and I think I posted it on there. Merry Christmas, everybody. Here's my effing Christmas tree, and it was the dashboard lights all lit up. It's lovely. Very Christmassy. Angel Churchill's here. Hello. I got your glass. Thank you, Angel. Oh, how much have I missed of this now? So, epic handouts. Epic handouts. Now, oh, shit. They have my thing. Epic handouts. Now, epic handouts is um, a cool website not a website, it's a cool channel on YouTube, which I discovered recently. A guy in America, I think he's actually a, a vet. That's his kind of day job, but he does unboxings, like technology stuff, and kind of same sort of stuff as we do here. And I watched a couple of his videos, and actually he's a, he's a really cool guy. And I think him and his girlfriend, they both got a channel, and they both do stuff, like hers is kind of like a, I think it's like a makeup y kind of thing. I don't know, I didn't, obviously not my deal. Don't want to pay much attention to that, but they both do it anyway. But yeah, he's a, a, a veterinary, so yeah, he basically makes these these videos when he's got some spare time. But yeah, it's, it's actually really cool. And he did a really, really good video on how to get free TV in America, which obviously for us in the UK is pointless, but 
he's had an absolute metric shit ton of videos watched on there. And we had a quick chat and we we're talking about doing some sort of collaboration in the future, which again, because of him being in the US and me being in the UK, is gonna be kind of tough. So we're gonna have to work something out. And again, with uh, Mohammed, I spoke about earlier in the same deal. So, and probably Tony to some extent as well, because Tony is actually a lot nearer and uh, Tony had been pretty much with us from the start. So it'd be really nice to do some kind of collaboration where we all get involved. And I'm trying to think of some kind of tech thing that we can all do together at the same time, but it's really difficult geographically and technologically to do it. And also with schedules and stuff, it's really, really tough. Time so yeah, the time zones and all that kind of stuff is really, really difficult. But I actually would like to do some kind of, almost like a round table tech talk <coughs> and maybe with a few of the other sort of players as well, like Bright Tech and things like that, and others that have been with us and been on the channel and been friends of the channel. It'd be really nice to have a kind of, um, maybe one live stream, have three, four of us all together answering questions for people. I think that'd be pretty cool, be a nice, uh, a nice thing to do, but we'll see. We will see. Oh, Epic Handouts is gone. I just bigged up his channel as well. Damn it. Anyway, check out Epic Handouts. His channel is called Epic Handouts. I'm trying to think, oh, I can't, what was his name, Calf? Can you remember, is it Jason? Not sure. Oh, I'll tell you what, this week has been absolutely mental. Our viewing figures have gone, basically they've doubled, I think, isn't it? Is it doubled? Our viewing figures have nearly doubled, which is actually terrifying. And we're getting so many questions and so many comments. And it's just, it is getting really mental. And I'm starting to think that, I'm not even sure if I can cope with all this. It is a hell of a lot of work to do. Literally, from the moment I wake up in the morning, afternoon sometimes, but from the moment I wake up, I grab my phone, and there's just like a whole list of questions to be answered. And it's like, oh my God. And I don't want to leave anybody out. So I'm there like, answer, answer, answer. And I've gone through and it's like an hour later. And there's still questions coming in as I'm typing the answers to the other ones. And then they're replying. And it's like, oh my God. And then I reply, because I'm, I'm, weirdly, I'm kind of polite. So if someone says thank you, I like to say thank you back. So it's like, getting into this like weird matrix type scenario where we're getting deja vu and I'm so I'm did I thank them already oh my god I can't remember and I don't want to not thank anybody because that's rude and I don't want to not answer anyone's question so if any of you are watching and you've asked a question and I haven't answered it genuinely genuinely I am so sorry but sometimes they just come in so quickly that even when I'm scrolling down pages I can't even find it so if there is a question you've asked and I haven't answered it please ask again and maybe do it in capital letters so it stands out and I'll, I'll notice it. But it has I'm been, on yeah, I didn't get and, oh yeah, that's the point. Yeah, Kaf just said, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna comment, try not to comment on someone's comment because then it kind of gets buried and it's really difficult to find them. But anyway, look at my dog wants to play FIFA. So um, yes, thank you for looking at my dog. Look at my dog. See you in the next one. He's gonna freak out now. Nope, I'm just shaking my head in disbelief. I'm thinking of something humorous to say there that won't get me into too much trouble. <laughs> oh, so Epic Handouts is gone. I do, I do seriously apologize. I should have answered that quicker. But I'm only a human being and there's beer involved, so it's not always easy. Yeah, Facebook. Tony says, oh my God, seriously, Facebook. Facebook is just insane. I'm, I am gonna have to do it. I am gonna have to do it because the Facebook stuff is actually, yeah, it is mental. It is, it's laughable, but I don't know whether it's entertaining because I know about stuff about PCs and I know about specs, so, to get that translated to people that maybe don't know so much about specs, they probably look at it and go, oh yeah, that seems perfectly okay. But if you don't know, 
then yeah, it's not as humorous. So maybe I'd have to explain it more. I don't know. Screw pedestrians, lol. Need a bumper sticker. Yeah, I'm up for that. Bullet man's in the house. Oh, my things stopped working. Bullet man's in the house. Bullet man, I rec recognise that name. That's one we haven't seen for a little while. Yeah, he's been a bit active. No, he hasn't been so active. He's not he's been, been active. He's been busy. Yeah, it's that time of year for it. Uh, Epic Handout says, yes, J Justin. So he is still about. He's lurking. Bless you, Justin. Did I say Justin or did I say Jason? Then Jamie. Jason. I said everything else but that, I think. <laughs> well, if he's still about, Epic Handouts, he is... <laughs> yeah, heard him talking about messages, got you. Yeah, Epic Handouts. Totally, yeah, go and check his stuff out. Now it's weird because, I don't know, actually, Jace, uh, Jason, Justin, seriously, Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> oh, dear. Stop, Sorry? I think you should stop drinking. Yeah, I should stop drinking. I am always behind the chat stream. I wish there was a way that I could see things easier. No glasses okay um what was i gonna say oh yeah that's right youtube right okay for us in england or sorry united kingdom don't want to offend anybody when we watch american videos or like australian videos it sounds like they've got a really cool accent whereas i pretty much sure i just sound like a west country farmer or like some kind of retarded pirate so I don't understand what the appeal would be for American w viewers or Australian viewers or whatever to watch English videos. I don't know, does that make sense? That kind of makes sense? Do you, do you know what I mean? So, and again, for like Tony with his Welsh accent, or sorry, Scottish accent, and uh, for other people in the UK with quite strong accents, um, there's, who is there? There's, um, it's got a few Liverpudlians. There's a guy who lives local to us who's got some kind of weird channel where he calls people nonces and gets paid for it, which I don't know. Something like Tic Tac Head or something they call him. I don't know. Like Maybe he's got a head that looks like a Tic Tac or he likes Tic Tacs. I don't know. Weird stuff. But yeah, I, I don't get what the appeal would be or whether actually Americans do you understand this accent. Do you actually get it or? Uh, you kind of is it now because we're such a global community that people kind of get accents more so i still struggle i was watching a video earlier on a canon sl 200 camera trying to get an idea of cameras and there was a uh, um i'm sure he was an indian guy and he was talking so fast and calf said to me are you watching that on fast forward he's like no that's just the way the guy speaks and it, it, it was so i speeded it up i put it on to one and a half times and it sounded exactly the same seriously no word of light, it was exactly the same. The last word of a sentence was understandable. Yeah, it was so fast. You get like the first word and maybe the last word and the rest in the middle was kind of undecipherable. But it wasn't bad. You could kind of get it, but it just was talking so fast. So yeah, I wonder, do Americans or people outside of the UK really understand the accent? Do you actually like the accent? Actually, someone in Germany said, um, I'm just here, no, what was it? I just want him to read me the entire instruction manual. I'm just here for his voice. Yeah, I'm just here for his voice. I want him to read me the instruction manual. I was like, okay. Never thought of it, but maybe I could do that. What have we got? Eighties horror fan is from Devonshire. As they would say in the US. <laughs> Tony, Tony's got a Welsh accent. For everybody out there wondering, Welsh Tony, the kind of the clue is predominantly in the title. Tony is actually a Welsh person trapped in a Scotsman's body. <laughs> and Ninja's in Devon as well. De now, I love Devon. I, actually, if I win the lottery or I retire early or whatever. I quite fancy going to live in Devon because Devon is kind of like the English Riviera. It's quite a nice little place. Huh. 
I'm just reading this line. This is going to start kicking off. This is great. Down here in the wilds, a sound like us is backwards. Now, if anybody wants to know what people sound like from kind of, I suppose really generalising a little bit, from kind of Devon down through to Cornwall, look up a person called Jethro on YouTube and you'll get a kind of idea of a, a thicker version of the accent. You sound like you could be a movie actor to us here in the USA. Epic hand I Whoa, 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 hang on, whoa, rewind that. Where is that? I'm going to screen grab that. Epic handouts. Epic handouts. Actually, yeah, I'm going to... Where's the print screen button on this shit? Epic handouts. I quote, You sound like you could be a movie actor to us here in the USA. <laughs> that is the most weirdest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. That makes me feel, like, really weird. Because Bristolian accents within the UK community is really known as being kind of quite trashy so Farmery. yeah like very kind of backward or a bit retarded and farmers and kind of a bit simple so for someone to say you could be a movie actor if you said the movie actor was like um oh what's his name who's the tall guy who was in the office or wrote the office david brent knows oh. ricky chase no not ricky chase the one who worked with him lurt yes yeah, yeah. If you're thinking of like movies such like Stephen Merchant, that you can Google him at your own. So Stephen Merchant is actually from this neck of the woods, so that would be totally understandable because he is a British actor. Um, he yeah does sound like this. What was he in? He was in um, oh, what's the film with the, Logan? The film Logan with Wolverine. He was in that. So yeah, I get that. <laughs> but that's good. You sound like you could be. I'm going to repeat that. You sound like you could be a movie actor to us here in the US of A. <laughs> that is impressive. <laughs> oh dear, I'm going to have to carry on reading some of this. Aletta says, most of her friends are online in the UK. So used to accents. Cool. Go back up to Josh Wells. Josh Wells. Josh Wells has two 1080 Ti's and he's bankrupt. And he spent 150 bucks pounds on a keyboard. Josh, why would you do that? Have you bankrupted yourself, or have you bankrupted your parents, or your family, or your girlfriend, or <laughs> some kind of younger brother, sister who leaves their piggy bank unattended? <laughs> Epic handouts. I'm, I, I'm, I'm like probably going to pronounce this wrong, but Cajun. Cajun? Is it Cajun? From the state Louisiana in the United States. I so want to go to the United States. I really, really do. It's something I want to do. But I very rarely leave the four corners of the Mike's Unboxing Studio. Stroke dining room. So maybe that won't. Sky Stalker. We watch a lot of UK TV. I don't hear the accent unless it is pointed out. Hmm. See, that's really weird. Because when I, actually, when I first started doing videos, I would be editing them. Believe it or not, I did actually edit them. They weren't just raw dumps of crap. I had, I would listen to it. And the first couple of times, I was listening to my voice back. And I was like, oh, I sound terrible. And it is. You know when you hear yourself backward? Not backward, but, because that would be weird. But when you hear recordings of yourself played back, or you see yourself on a video, you think you sound terrible, but after a little while, something triggers in your brain, and you do sound exactly like you do in your head. Your, your brain does some weird thing. And so now when I'm listening to it, or I watch a YouTube video that I'm in, and I'm kind of like commenting or whatever, I sound exactly the same as I do in my head, which I know I probably don't, so my brain's doing tricks. So I can't tell if I sound like a real idiot or just like the partial idiot that I hear in my head. I don't know. But it's cool. Thank you anyway for, for being very kind. That is very kind. Ninjas from the Barnstable area. The Barnstable Massive. Barnstable, Barnstable, is that near Biddeford? Beach. 
Yeah, Willicum and all that. Nice. Nice. I love the way people from Bristol say Bristol. What, Brizzle? I'm from Brizzle. Of course I love Zio Bozy Chips, I. That is a very well-known Bristolian thing to say. Now there is another one as well, which only Bristolians would get, which is um, if you manage to park your car in a very unfortunate space that you probably wouldn't be able to get out of again, you would say, he's gone, <laughs> I can't even do it now. He's gone and back in, no, he's gone and back in where he castn't back in out or summer. <laughs> summer. Summer. <laughs> I can't even do it now. Oh, I used to be able to do that. He's gone and gotten where he castn't back and assn't. That's it. Yes. So that translates roughly to he's got it. He's gone and parked his vehicle in some awkward situation that he can't get him back out of. <laughs> uh, it's like Brizzle. It is. It is. Mike, the next Patrick Stewart. <laughs> I. Mm, I kind of, yeah, I like that in some ways. That's Star Trek. Yeah, Star Trek, yeah, Captain Jean-Luc Picard. They did say to be a Star Treker, didn't they? Actually, that was one of the things, yeah. When this channel first started, I was chatting to uh, one of my friends who actually happens to be a, a movie designer, and he said, what you need is some kind of little gimmick or element which makes your videos a little bit different and stand out from the rest and I was kind of just on eBay looking at stuff because it was getting towards Christmas time I think it was yeah it must have been Christmas time or late November and I was looking through and there's like party wear and I saw a Star Trek outfit and I said to Kath I gotta get that Star Trek unboxing that is the way forward and she's looking, looking at me she's like no you're not doing that no it's not gonna happen just no. Yeah, so I said at the time after we discussed it, I said to Mark, the guy, said, Mark, what do you reckon? Star Trek? He's like, oh yeah, that would be amazing. You should totally do that. That would be off the chain. Star Trek themed unboxings, definitely the way to go. And I kind of wish at some point I did do that because I think it would be kind of like a weird edge. And I even, I was like, in my head, I planned it all out. Like using, uh, there's a Photoshop plugin you can do to do the warp. So products would literally like beam into the set. And then when I'm done with them, they can beam out and gain all those kind of things and all those sound effects of the, of the doors opening and stuff. It was all there ready. And you never know, it may still happen. But there you go. Oh, Epic Handouts, I think I must pronounce that right, Cajun. Now, I'm really confused, Cajun, because Cajun... When we talk about Cajun in the UK, generally that relates to spices. So we have like uh, a Cajun rub or uh, Cajun spices that you kind of like sprinkle on stuff. But is that from, I don't, I'm completely like geography. Like I've said this a thousand times. Geography, I have not got a clue. I struggle to find my way out of the house at times. So around the world is a completely, is a mystery. It really is. You could show me a map. You could point out things. No, gone. My geography exam. I learned about dikes in my geography exam. I think there's something that has water in them or something. I don't know. It's, it's a geological thing. Yeah. There was something about you have to put a finger in a dike. I don't know. I don't, I, school was really confusing for me. I didn't understand it. Anyway. Moving on. Captain Baker. Captain Baker. Is Captain Baker, is he one of my Star Trekkers? Ooh, I didn't do a thing. <laughs> hey Mike, in your last Colink Stronghold mod video, you said that you will make another follow-up video about this case, answering, was it a mistake or something? But I really can't find it. Um, the good, the, well, there's a good reason why there's not a video because there isn't a follow-up because actually it isn't necessary. 
because the Co-Link Stronghold is currently down over by there, as they say in Wells, and is CAF's video editing machine. So everything's running absolutely amazingly and it requires virtually no maintenance at all, apart from because CAF is a smoker, it gets covered in cigarette ash sometimes and we have cats, so every now and then it pulls in a few too many fur balls, but other than that, the case has been absolutely perfect, 100%, so not really any more mods I can do to it. The hard drive thing was an issue, but I've solved that by basically putting an SSD in there because of the vibrations and a little bit of foam. Other than that, amazing case. Actually, probably one of my favorite purchases of the year. Yeah, I think it probably is. So hopefully that answers your question. So there probably won't be a follow-up video for it because it's not really exciting to say this is cool and it's still working because it doesn't really interest people. But if anyone has questions on the video, then I will answer them. But I don't really think I'll be making another follow-up video. Maybe I will, maybe I won't, but it's unlikely. But it's a great case and definitely recommended. And if you can buy one in your region, totally go and get one. Skystalker, the funniest thing about UK, New Zealand, and Australia is the slang that people use. So many different words that have different meanings depending on the location. Yeah, the, for the UK against the um, the Americans, there's all this thing like, you guys have like a, a fanny pack, which is like, a, has someone already said that? Gav's pointing, so that means done. something's been done. I can't see it. But yeah, basically there's um, yeah, a fanny pack. Now in the United Kingdom, a fanny is a, a girl's front bottom, if I can say it that bluntly. So when we hear a fanny pack in the American, like that's the, you're, <laughs> it's just, it's not right. <laughs> there is definitely something lost in translation. And also we have a, a phrase for cigarettes called a fag. So if someone says, can you light me up a fag in America? I think that is a completely different thing. Or if someone says, is that fag lit? That is like in America, that means totally something different. I don't know about Australia and Canada, but I'm pretty sure it's probably in the same, same ballpark. I don't know. You have to let me know, but the translations are funny as hell, especially when you, when you like, Oh, and another good one in school. Now, if you go into school and in the UK, or you're from the UK and you go to an American school and you say, oh, I've made a mistake, can you give me a rubber? Like that's completely different because in America, from what I can recall, a rubber is a condom. So if a kid come up to a teacher in America and said, come have a rubber, they'd be like, why? It's not break time yet. Anyway, it's funny as hell. Uh, who else is, what else is there? <laughs> Epic handouts, good night, God bless, all that stuff. Oh, I've... It's a cooling stronghold, the one with the funny acrylic front panel. The one with the funny acrylic front panel. Ooh, no, that didn't have acrylic. That was the Cooler Master. The Cooler Master, Master Box Light 3.1 and the 5 Light were the ones with the acrylic, like the angular front. Is that the one you're referring to? What's that little stubby rear one? The small rear tour one is. Uh, no, it's just, it's got a bulge on the side. I don't know, I need to read that. Ninja 47 has got very good eyes or I have a very good camera. One of the two. Yeah, Aleto's just said it. The funniest thing is when an Aussie friend told me the fanny down there is means the front, not the back side. Yeah, it, it does. It does. We call them bum bags. So we, yeah, we call them bum bags because of they kind of rest. They should be, the, really though, they are fanny packs, aren't they? Because they do hang over like the front bottom rather than the back bottom. Although if you're, I don't know, <laughs> hey? Caf just said something which was probably crude, so I'm, I didn't hear it. <laughs> yeah, Fanny definitely means the front bottom. <laughs> T 
Tony is defending himself there. Down over by there. What the F? We don't say that. Now, I've worked in Wales for five years. <laughs> I know. Yes, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Cardiff, yeah. Cause Car yeah, Cardiff, actually. Now, it's a weird thing. Cause it's over by there. Cardiff. In, if you're in Cardiff and you say something is near you or if you want something. Say, for instance, I said to Kath, um, pass me that pen. And she says, where is that pen? I say, oh, it's over by there. Now, obviously, it can't be over by there. Well, it could be, I suppose. But it's, it's just over there. But there's a Cardiff thing where they say it's over by there. It's, like, well, it's not by there. It's either there or it's somewhere else. And they didn't understand it. And like, no, it's over by there. Or by that box. So, yeah. But Cardiff itself is a Cardiff in Wales is a very kind of... <coughs> it's almost like its own little thing. Like in the UK, we don't really like London because London is its own little thing. And Cardiff is very similar, whereas people outside of Cardiff don't really like Cardiff. It's very, yeah, it's a very little thing. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> Captain Backer, are you still using the same fan placement like you showed in the last video? I'm not quite sure how I'd place all the fans. I'm going to have three 120s. Now, I did have another look at this actually very recently, and I have that actually tell a lie. That is the only modification I've made to it. There are three fans in the front of that co link case now. Really and truly, it's best designed for two which are above the kind of the, um, the basement cover. But I did put a third one in there and move them around a little bit. It's a bit odd to find the placements to get them equaled out properly because there's no, they're all like sliding mounts. But yeah, it does take three in there and actually it does run really well. That's anyway. three. Yeah. So just three in the front, no other ones at all. So it's purely uh, positive pressure, pushing air out of all the bits to try and reduce the dust. A letter. To me, a pack of fags is a gay biker gang with pink Harleys. Okay. That would be pretty cool to see. All drive into the Blue Oyster Bar. Some of you probably won't understand what the Blue Oyster Bar is, but just Google it or watch Police Academy. Uh, is the Stronghold the cube case? No, the Stronghold was... Um, Ninja47's asked this. Was the stronghold the cube case? No. Yeah, the ninja. Uh, the ninja. <laughs> uh, the 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 Colink Observatory. Wow, words is hard. Is pretty much a almost a clone of the Fractal Design C. Yeah, the Define C T G. The, uh, the cube-like one I had was the, or I still have actually, is in here somewhere. Would I take it back upstairs? Is the Rio Toro CR1088, which still kind of blows my mind a little bit because it's very, very similar to the new Corsair Air 540, I think it is, which isn't very, no, not the 540, the... The Lan Lee, there's a new Lan Lee one, which has got like a kind of dual chamber set up. It's very, very much like that. It costs 38 euros in, in my country, that's crazy. Uh, oh, what's that, the Colink. 38 euros is probably about what I would expect to pay to be. £30 plus a bit of postage, so £35-ish, which probably equates to about 36, 37 euros, maybe 38 euros. Uh, not bad. Yes, Welsh Tony. Be back now in a minute. Now that's another one. Now that is a real, real head F. Sorry, I've got to turn the thing. Oh, Kath, it's a shame you're there. Because I could put a camera on that. Use, Our freaky cat's freaking out, trying to catch stuff on the window. I think the cat's had a few. It's been on the old catnip. 
Oh, the fly's come in there now. Do you think I catch it? Never mind. No. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a weird thing. I'll be there now in a minute. So, you're not either one. I'll be there now means immediate, but in a minute means in a minute. So to say I'll be there now in a minute, you might as well just drop the now, really. Over by there, now in a minute. Over by there, now in a minute. Two perfect examples of Cardiff. A letter's off, she got to let the dogs out. Who let the dogs out, letter? Sorry. Embarrass myself and everybody else. They probably want to kill something. <laughs> hey, that's a good thing. Let the dogs kill stuff. Bring them over here, they can have our cats. Ah, Tony is an interesting question related to something that we do. Um, Tony is asking, for those of you who can't see the chat that is, um, Mike, something off topic, but is actually relative to us both. Have you seen the YouTube stories thing? Copying Snapchat and Facebook, um, what do I think of it? Um, I, I have seen the YouTube stories thing, and I don't really kind of get it. I know in the new year, the, um, the creator studio, the beta, is going to be the norm. So there's going to be quite a learning curve for quite a lot of us, because I don't think many of us have gone into the... Um, the beta version and used it very often. I don't actually, that's an interesting thing. If you've uh, used the beta, let me know. I'd actually be genuinely very interested to see what you think of it. Calf doesn't like it. I gotta be honest with you, I do struggle with some of the aspects of it, but overall I do kind of like the layout, but I do find it difficult to find things. But I suppose that's like with most things, if you go from Apple to Android or from Xbox, Xbox to PlayStation, is going to be some differences which take a while to get used to and after a while muscle memory kicks in and you can do that stuff still on your head with one finger in a dike so it's going to be uh, second nature by any time <laughs> sorry I just noticed uh, I bet a letter has killer chihuahuas <laughs> there's so many things that I can answer back to that which I probably shouldn't but I'll leave you all to ponder on that one. <laughs> you, someone else said Rottweilers. Oh yeah. <laughs> Dull. Dory. Uh, oh, Tony. Yeah, Tony. If you're not you, well, if you use Chrome, if you click on the top, Ninja go in. Oh, no worries. Bye, Ninja. Have a, um, if you haven't already, have a great Christmas, if you're having a belated one. And have a great New Year's and all that stuff. And we'll be doing a stream New Year's Eve into New Year's thing, whatever, where we'll be consuming lots more of this, talking a lot more about this, and hopefully unboxing some stuff like this. So feel free to join us. It'll be around about midnight. Brightech is in the house. Brightech, are your ears burning? Because we were talking about you. Stealing my ideas for the Windows 10 video, you absolute bar steward. If you scroll to the top of the chat, you'll work out what all that is about, and it'll all become completely trans... Well, well actually, no, probably won't. Basically, someone said, was asking questions about Windows 10, and where to get a cheap license, and you've done a video today, but we were talking about it before I found out, so if I do a video, I'm not copying you, it's because someone's asked me to do it. Unlike the video thing with the NVIDIA uninstaller, which I released, I think, was it, did I release just after you or something, or a short while after you? I swear to God, I'm not copying you, okay? It's in the chat, I've got proof. Someone asked me to do it. But I will watch yours, and I'll try and do it differently, so as to uh, differentiate, dif to make mine different. <laughs> yeah, Welsh Tony told on you. <laughs> did, did, did a letter, oh, she did ask, 
She, ha she has a 90 pounds black Labrador, a 60 pound pit bull, Dave Moon mix, and a 40 pound bulldog mix. They all think they're lap dogs. You must have a massive lap. Jesus, that's that's, that's, a hun that's nearly 200 pounds of bloody dog. Incredible, absolutely incredible. <laughs> Wow, that's some big dogs right there. I gotta be honest with you, I am actually genuinely scared of pit bulls, David Munn, or Sations. Um, I actually got bit on the ass by a, a Alsatian. This was an ex-police dog, and I was working in a shop, and the shop owner's brother came in with his ex-police dog Alsatian. He was absolutely cool, just led on the floor, chilling in the shop, and I had to go and get something from my car out the front. I walked past the dog, the weed. He smelt the weed in my pocket and bit my ass. That's not right. He's off duty. He's an ex-police dog. He shouldn't be biting my ass for having weed. Yeah. Damn. Aletta, the dog's way more than I do. Now, we don't... Now, Aletta, we don't understand pangs. We do. Well, calf does. I don't. 14 pangs in a stone. Fort 14 pounds in a stone, yeah, but that's like multiplication of 14. They didn't teach us that at school. They taught us 1 to 12. Anything other than that, I'm screwed. Yeah, but if you're 10 stone, you're 140 pounds. Okay, all right. That's all you need to know. So Aletta says the dogs weigh more than I do. Now, is that individually? <laughs> yeah, it must be, mustn't it? No, dogs. it can't be, can it? It's more than one. Dogs. Dogs. Oh, dogs, yes, that's plural. Well, you'd hope so. You'd have to weigh 200 pounds of a dog. <laughs> that's... How many stone is that? See, you're struggling now. Ah, smart task. <laughs> oh dear. Brightech, nice to see you. Um, you do weigh in stone. Holy backwards, Batman. Yeah, the United Kingdom is very weird. From our earlier colonial days, when we used to sort of invade countries and take them over and declare them as our own, we used to introduce all kinds of weird stuff. So we do like, we do feet and inches for height. We do miles for distance. But I got a weird feeling that our miles are different from your miles. So a mile US is different from a mile UK. They use kilometers. Very much like gallons. Our UK gallon of fluid is I think slightly more than your US quarts. gallon. They have quarts, don't they? Yeah, but they have a quarter of a gallon. Yeah. So it's weird. It's, um, check out Skystalker with the 520, oh, because you're a pilot. Of course, you would know that, wouldn't you? I was, yeah, see, see, I've always been smarter. Yeah, Imperial versus US gallon, that's right. That's what really confused me, because when people used to quote miles to the gallon, and the UK stuff was like really different from the US. I was like, huh? Why is it so different? But yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yes, we do weigh in stone and we are slightly backwards. But the thing is the kilo and the pound, no, the pound's all right, isn't it? The pound's kind of imperial, isn't it? And the kilo, kilo is metric. It's just all far too confusing. It's just all noughts and ones. We're to use kilos, I think, aren't we? Yeah, we're supposed to use kilos and stuff because Euro. we're part of the uh, Eurozone. But we don't get it. Not for long. Actually, Brightech's here. Brightech can answer me a question because Brightech does technology and stuff. Brightech, do you use an Xbox and have you managed to get a keyboard and mouse working on it yet? Because that was what my rant was about earlier. I don't know. Jeez, we've been going for two hours nearly. Holy balls, Batman. I don't drink a lot though, considering. Merry Christmas, everybody. Ah, do you know what? Right now, I could go for some spicy noodles. We've got some, we've got some spicy noodles, haven't we? After this stream, going for some spicy hot noodles. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, I played Xbox. Refraction has played keyboard. 
Right, Refraction, have you played Xbox with keyboard and mouse, or just keyboard? And hi, by the way. It's all very confusing. I can't believe the time. Keyboard and mouse. Now, Refraction, do you play Fortnite? Is the Fortnite now working with keyboard and mouse? So I can actually sober up slightly, go upstairs, get my Xbox, and make this darn video that I was going to make about these little beauties. Yes. Sorry, it's going to be far. Yes, you can. Now, Bright Tech, you say you can use keyboard and mouse on Xbox. Can you still use it within Fortnite? Because that is the one game that I actually went and got and paid for the damn Xbox Live bloody thing so I could play against other things. And it didn't work. The keyboard worked, but the mouse didn't because they stopped it. I don't know. That is that is the question I need answered, really. Is Fortnite still working, or now working, with keyboard and mouse? Because it didn't, then it did, then it stopped again, and as far as I know, it still doesn't work. So I would be actually genuinely interested to know. Okay. Uh, yeah, he says... Refraction, I, yeah, it says there about you need to change the polling rate. I did change the polling rate, but my mouse I was testing actually worked straight off the back when I plugged it in, so I didn't have to change the polling rate. I was playing it absolutely fine, no problem at all, and then they released an update, which then took away the mouse. The keyboard still carried on working, but the mouse wouldn't, and apparently they removed it at 10 p.m. the night I was doing the video. So I'm interested to know, because I've packed all that crap away. It's gone back in the box, on top of the wardrobe, never to be seen again or used in Even anger. I've actually half edited the video, so I've done the unboxing of these peripherals, the setup and going into Fortnite, and that's where the point where it just stopped working. It's like, ah, Very, very, very angry. Oh, Tony's had it working keyboard and mouse on PS4. That's interesting. Maybe I could do a PS4 version then. I have to steal it off George. I think nobody notices the first half as an Xbox. Yeah. I, yeah, actually, if I do some clever editing, I could do the first half as an Xbox and the second half as PS4. No one will notice. Refraction's not sure. Not played it in a few days. Well, I tried it on the... What day was it? Was it before Christmas or after? Yeah, before. So I think I tried it on the 23rd or 24th. Probably the 23rd, I think. And that was the day when the cutoff was, apparently. So they added it in. I think it's got something to do with the fact that uh, Razer are now an official Microsoft partner and are making a specific Xbox version of some of their uh, peripherals, which won't be released, I think, until over the new year, or maybe even CES. So, from what I understand, because of the partnership between Fortnite, Microsoft, and Razer, they've removed the functionality temporarily until then. I could be completely wrong, but that is my theory, and that is what other people have speculated. Speculated, I said a word that sounded really almost intelligent. Write it down, Kath. Actually, speaking of write it down, there was stuff I was going to talk about. No, never mind. Brightex mate has a PS4 and we and I use PC and we play Fortnite together. Yeah, because you could, that's the whole point that they're trying to make it so there's interplay. But there's a thing, if you look in the top right hand corner when you're playing Fortnite, there's a little arrow and it tells you which servers you're connected to. So if you're playing on keyboard and mouse servers, it shows a keyboard and mouse in the top corner. If you're playing on a controller, it shows a controller in the top corner. So you only play against people that are playing with the same type of controller. So there isn't any unfair advantage. 
So anyway, very strange. You can only, oh, wow, there's lots of cross, cross thing in going on. Cross contamination of the uh, Xbox genes. Sky Stalker, yes, it is true. Apparently it is true, but well, this is Fortnite specific. <coughs> I, I can't comment on any of the other games because basically I haven't tried them. Now, just to actually back up from what I was saying, um, I have actually tried playing Minecraft on the keyboard and mouse, and every single mouse and every single keyboard I've tried have all worked. But for the video I was making, because I started off with the whole Fortnite thing, and being obviously Fortnite is a really popular title, and has a probably a larger install base or a more relevant base of users that would play cross-platform, that is kind of where I went for. So it is only Fortnite which has this problem at the moment, as far as I'm aware. It isn't any of the other games, so that is... I should have said that earlier, actually. But yeah, if you're if you're playing against people with um, a keyboard and mouse, the Xbox or the PC or whatever platform you're playing on does recognize that fact. And actually, if you look in the top right hand corner, you will see a little icon of a keyboard and mouse or a uh, traditional controller. Refraction. By the way, thanks for recommending the Colink Stronghold. Just built my new PC in it and has great value for money. Yes, it's pretty good. Tony, Tess, Tony wants a Tesla. Mike is nursing the Captain Morgan. I know, it's Calf's fault. She said I gotta stop drinking. I disagree. I right, so have a little one, a little snifter. Cheers, everybody. Why? Like lettuce dogs. Then. Yeah, I was trying to be like a lettuce dogs. Then. <laughs> Actually, my name is my surname is Churchill, so I am like a Churchill dog in the border. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, Welsh Tony, I play controller and we play with people on PC with keyboard and mouse. Well, maybe that's something they are introducing or is slowly being introduced depending on your platform. I know um, definitely when I tried playing on the Xbox version, there was a, an icon in the top which said which kind of server I was in. So, mm, I don't know. Captain Morgan and Ginger Ale, yes, we do like that. We do like that very much. Well, Calf doesn't actually so much. I'm sick of it, I can't drink it now. Yeah, Calf, Calf had a bit of a drinking accident and was puking out of her nose holes. I wasn't. It's just for sick. Yeah. HMV have gone bust, bite bloody time. I was expecting you to put a little Morgan in the glass and then drink from the bottle. We usually do. That would have been something that I would have done if I'd have been thinking slightly more coherently. But we were told we were like gypsies in that. Yeah, we are gypsies, really. Aetis Horror Fan is a Blu-ray nerd. It could have been worse. You could have been an HD DVD nerd, in which case you'd be really up shit creek. Now, HMV, actually, I don't know, for people in the UK, I... Hasn't that gone bust before? Yeah, well, it went into receivership before. It's, got, it's gone into receivership again, I think. But, um... I cannot remember the last time I went into HMV. I think it was probably about two and a half, maybe three or four, no, maybe three years ago, we went to Cribs Causeway shopping, and we were looking for something for George, I think, for Christmas, maybe, like a Mario game or something. And didn't we walk around all the different shops looking in there to see which one was the cheapest? Mm. This is before we had things like the internet, or 
easily accessible. Brightex got an ITX build coming up. Way. Now ITX is a weird thing. I've I've got an ITX PC in the living room, which is like a media PC, but bearing in mind that TV gets turned on probably once every two weeks, it's not really getting a great deal of use, so I should probably do something with it. But ITX has always been a weird thing. You're paying a lot of money to get something in a tiny shoehorn, which is inevitably going to get super hot, and ITX just goes against the grain for me completely. <laughs> now, actually, HMV originally, when they, I think they sold actually hi fi equipment at one point, and I remember my granddad had a old fashioned record deck with the pull open doors, you know, like a drinks cabinet almost. And that was actually made by HMV. And it had the little logo of the dog on the front. Trivia, Trivia there. <clears throat> Bright Tech, I'm only doing it for the content. It can sit with my other 10 PCs. <laughs> now that's the spirit. No, that's the spirit. As my kick with 10 PCs. <laughs> yeah, as my kick with 10 PCs. Actually, the closest I've got recently to an ITX. <sighs> was that oh it's disco ball time sky stalker <laughs> need to get that liver in shape <laughs> dear god the um the zotac z box the magnus it's a ryzen 5 1400 and 1060 i love that light i really do it's supposed to be sound to light. Is it working? Yeah. Sound to light. Light to... Oh, it's off again. It's only on for 30 seconds. <coughs> Dusty. <coughs> Jesus. Thank you, Sky Stalker. That's a very, very, very lovely, lovely man of you. All I need now is another... 35,000 of those and uh, I can retire quite happily <laughs> or if I've already won the lottery tonight I may retire <laughs> no I haven't <laughs> I think Zotac have gone bust so I don't have to I think in the moment no actually um, Jake I think it was Jake is it Jake Oh yeah, that's Rio Toro. I can't think of the bloody person's name. Man. Calf's gonna get it, it's on the tip of tongue. Vincent, yeah, my man Vincent from Zotac. Um, hopefully he'll be in touch soon, but I think he must have. they must have shut down for Christmas or something. I haven't heard anything from them. Tony won the lottery. He won 10 pounds. And he's gonna share it with all of the Mike's Unboxing subscribers. Bless you. Now, Brightech, have you got to the point where you're probably you're probably more into it than me now, but are you getting to the point now where you've got so many PCs you don't know what to do with them? Because I've, I've got to the point now where I, actually I don't like letting go of them. Oh, excuse me. So when I build them, I actually I get a, a, like an attachment to them because I've spent a lot of time and effort sourcing the parts, getting the right bits, building it. Cable managing it, cleaning it, all that sort of stuff. Do what? Loving it. Loving it. I don't love the PC. Love the PC. I don't love the PC. I tried it, it didn't work. But so I try and make them as nice as I possibly can. But then I get to the point where I've got like this weird emotional attachment. So when it comes to selling it, it's like I don't really want to sell it. I do because I'd like to buy something else to replace it and to do the whole process again. But I feel that emotional bond with the PC. And that's weird. That shouldn't be allowed. I'm not a hoarder, are you? 
Yeah, and I'm not really a hoarder, but when it comes to PCs, I I do a little bit, and it is getting a little bit worrying. I've got too many PCs now. I'm like that cats. Glenn is in the house. Oi, oi, Savaloi. Hey, Sky Stalker, Frugal, you do not know about Frugal. Me and Mrs. C, we are Frugal AF. We're faff. We're completely all over that. We do, we do. That's what the channel's about. We save money. We don't spend money unnecessarily. We do, like, we can quite easily go and buy whatever, i9, 9900Xs or... RTX 2080 Ti's and all that sort of stuff, if we really, really wanted to. But that's the whole point, you don't need to. And do you really want to? Yeah, great, you can play a game at 4K at 120 frames per second, but I'm like 44 years old. My eyes can't even see 1080p, let alone 4K. We could just push the central heating button, but we'd rather cut pallets. Yeah, yeah, kind of the same. Like literally, we could go out to the, well, we don't even have to go out to there. We could go on our mobile phone, press the button, and have the hive heating come on. But rather than do that, we'll go in the garden, we'll cut some wood, and chuck it on the fire. Because that don't cost us anything, it's a bit of exercise, it's all good. We are that kind of frugal person, as you can tell by me nursing this Captain Banter, which was actually given to me by a, a lovely, lovely man quite a while back now, actually. Bernie, if you're watching, bless you, thank you very much. But that's it. We are we are super frugal. We and like stuff we do spend money on is not stuff that kind of evaporates or goes away. It's like we spend money on a keyboard, a mouse, like real tangible things which have a resale value. Like we wouldn't go and buy a brand spanking new car because why buy, why buy a new one? one? You could buy someone else's used one for less money. It hasn't got a Christmas tree on the dashboard. It doesn't work for anyone. Yeah. So, yeah, Tony is, Tony is where, where it's at. It is, it's like, why, why spend unnecessary, it, I, it's such a stupid thing to do. What I'm saying is completely at odds with what really YouTube thinks that the channel should be about. It's not about buying the latest and greatest and making money and people spending money and that whole consumerism bullshit. It's rubbish, it is generally rubbish. And you watch the videos from like these big YouTubers who are sponsored and get stuff sent to them through the post. And there's a few of them where you look at it and the, the shelves in the background just lined up with graphics cards and motherboards and all sorts of stuff. And they make a big thing about, oh yeah, I'll just, I'll, I'll use that one. And or oh, maybe I'll use that. Oh no, I'll, I'll use that one. And then they turn around on another video and do, today I'm gonna do my $500 budget PC build. I bought this out of my own money. It's like, yes, exactly. That is the point. That is what you should be doing. Everyone, everyone yeah, people get their kicks by seeing a brand new graphics card or whatever, and they probably do aspire to it, much as people watch videos for like Porsches, Lamborghinis, all those kind of exotic cars. But the reality is, you're probably gonna buy a Ford Mondeo or a F-150 truck. You're gonna buy what the mainstream buy. Very much like what I try and do on this channel. Everything that I've done on this channel is mainstream stuff. Like a, a 15 pound mouse, a 30 pound keyboard, a 25 pound monitor. Um, yeah, the case was a bit expensive, but the graphics cards, cheap ass graphics cards, G EVJ GTX 970, 130 pounds or whatever it was. The Frozer, 50 pounds or something. It's all stuff that normal people can buy, which is the best the best stuff. Why why spend daft money on it? It's mental. We're we're in the real world. Despite what you want to believe in or what you want to believe you are in, you're in the real world because that's probably why you're watching this or why you are actually watching YouTube rather than out spinning around California in your Lamborghini. Anyway, run over. You get what I mean. Real world stuff. That's where it's at. Frugal's a great thing. Now, actually, it sent 
when I, I worked for a computer repair company, we were kind of mobile, so we had hire cars. So every six months or so, we'd get a brand spanking new car, which was lovely, but it cost quite a lot of money. And we ranted the hell out of those cars. And then some poor sucker's gonna go and buy that. But we'd taken about, I don't know, 25, 30% of that value off the car in six months. So someone's gonna be losing somewhere on the line. And also, I had a really bad stomach one day and crapped all over the seat on one of them. So whoever bought that car, <laughs> that before, damn. That yeah, before the car had even had its first full tank of gas, I shit the front seat. <laughs> wow. In a dirt track. <laughs> and then I wasn't down the dirt track, that was on the dual carriageway. I crashed the car <laughs> in, the, in the dirt track. That was the second one that I didn't shit in. Anyway, moving on. Linus, what's that? Linus Tech Tips unboxed a $10,000 PC. That's him. That's mental. £10,000. You think of, that's like, in the UK, that's like an average nurse's wage for probably four months. That's so extravagant. I know it sounds a bit stupid, like, oh bit kind of PC stuff, but reality is 10,000 pounds. You think if you've got a mortgage, 10,000 pounds, you pay 10,000 pounds off your mortgage. That'd be amazing. Sly stalker, I can't believe you just admit you shit the car on YouTube. Yeah, it's a shame I can't remember the registration actually because I'd look that sucker up, see who's got it. <laughs> Just for shits and giggles. Oh, good one. Brightek, the old AMD 8350 with an old GPU who play all AAA games. Do you know what? We were talking about that a little bit earlier in the stream. The, the uh, not the brown stream that I did in the brand new hire car. <laughs> the stream that we were doing earlier. Oh man, this is all going really bad. But yeah, the, uh, the FX chips now are kind of coming into their own because Everything's going multi-core. So those chips were kind of way, way ahead of their time. Now that multi-core is about, they can take advantage of it more so, and they can kind of you know, spread their wings or stretch their legs or whatever the euphemism is for that. But yeah, they're, they're, if you look at uh, FX 8350 versus like Ryzen 5 1400, that kind of thing, they're pretty much neck and neck. There's not a lot in them. Tan leather, it was after. It started off fabric and I turned it into tan leather. That's why you shouldn't drink anymore. <laughs> yeah. It, oh man, heated seats. I'd have electrocuted my ass. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> to the day the owner's looking for a dodgy sandwich. Do you know what? I felt really bad about that. And there was two cars that we had, one after the other. So this was a, a brand new Ford Focus turbo diesel and uh, turbo diesel. <laughs> and uh, yeah, literally, I was like, I really shouldn't be going to work today, but I did anyway. So I crapped it. <laughs> and then a week later, someone else wanted the car. So I had to trade it back in, luckily. And uh, I had a brand new Corsa SXI and within probably four days, three days of having it, I drove it down a country lane in some dipstick in a BMW. It was literally, I saw him coming over the brow of the hill and he's there stroking his dog in the passenger seat, not taking any attention or restraining his dog, whatever he's doing, he just piled straight into the front of the car. So I killed two cars in like a week. Wow. <laughs> It was, uh, yeah. This stream has been one of the funniest, I love it. See, alcohol and YouTube are a good thing. I reckon actually, if, um, <laughs> Sweet Tony if Captain Morgan or Coors Light wanna sponsor me and just like top up my tank, so to speak, I'll be quite happy to do that and I'll put a banner on everything. 
and I'll definitely try not to crap these trousers. 80s horror fan, he's in stitches. <laughs> and it's not that I'm funny, it's just the accent. If I did it in a, a different voice, it would be not funny. You need some nanny pads. <laughs> Sky Stalker, I'll sponsor you. Well, you already are almost. Tenor Man, yes. See, that's, uh, right, going back to actual sensible stuff, well, vaguely sensible, my video PC, or my PC that I use pretty much all the time, has got a Ryzen 1700X, and I genuinely, genuinely cannot see any reason why I would upgrade it. I genuinely can. It's got 16 gigs of RAM, a GTX 1070, a NVMe hard drive, and a two terabyte SSD, a uh, two terabyte hard drive. Hard drive, maybe upgrade, but can't see the point because I'm not going to get a two terabyte SSD for less than two, two to three hundred pounds. I can't see the point. I, I, I would love to get some new technology like a, like a 2700X or even a 2600X, but why? I probably wouldn't even notice. Actually, I might do the Pepsi challenge with CAF. I might change the processor on her PC without her knowing and see if she notices any difference at all. And I put pretty much most of my money frugally on her not recognizing any difference whatsoever. And I think most people would be the same unless you actually point out in FPS or like some kind of benchmarking program, most people don't have two clues what is going on in their PC. As long as it opens up programs, plays Counter-Strike or Fortnite or whatever, it's all good. <laughs> 1700X is an awesome chip, Brightech is saying. Yeah, it totally is. It totally is a great chip. I've got a, a Ryzen 7 1700 in the streaming PC, which uh, yeah, runs like a dream, actually. And I've got a 1700X in my PC. And to be honest with you, in, in real terms, I don't notice a difference, even though the 1700X has got like a much higher turbo speed. Who knows? I was, I have seen, I'm, I'm, I am actually tempted to get the Ryzen 5 1600, because they're about 120 pounds at the moment, which actually seems like a really good deal. And I was thinking if I get one of those, put it into CAF's PC to replace the Ryzen 3 2200G, and see if she actually notices, because I don't think she would. I wouldn't. No, she wouldn't. See, I'm reading all these comments now, and I'm saying I'm seeing things about people seeing shit everywhere, and then Skystalker saying do it, it'd be a great experiment. So I don't have, have I have I got to like do it now? <laughs> Just evacuate myself. <laughs> Aletta's really happy with her Ryzen 5 2600. I think that is pretty much, to be honest with you, the sweet spot. If you're going for the new the 200, uh, 2000 series, I think the 2600 probably is the sweet spot when you're talking value for money or in, unless you've got a specific productivity thing in mind that you need loads of cores, I think the R5 1600 and the R5 2600 are probably where kind of the value for money tapers off after that. But the, obviously the 2700, the 1700 and the X versions are the kind of the cream of the crop where people want them for the kind of the bragging rights. Atheist <laughs> horror fan is seriously in bits. I'm glad you spelt that right. I was in the shits. Skystalker thinks that Calf would figure out pretty quickly. Clearly, you've never met Calf, <laughs> and you got ten quid on it. Okay. Right, I'm going to do, because actually there is, I did swap, now CAF's PC had <coughs> the Ryzen 3 1200, which I took out and I put in the Ryzen 3 2200G, 
which has a probably best part of four or 500 megahertz per core speed increase across it. And because it's 2000 series, it's generally a little bit nippier and she didn't notice at all. I said to her, is your PC any faster? And you do it when I'm not here. And yeah. she didn't know that I did it. She's like, mm, I don't think so. So that kind of sums up that. So quad core versus quad core, 500 megahertz per core difference. And with, how many, how many tabs have you got open there, Calf? 20 or so? He's actually counting the tabs now. It must be at least 20. She's got 24 tabs open in Edge, and then an additional seven or eight open in Chrome, plus Outlook open, and o Adobe Premiere and OBS running. I ain't got, I got Premiere. I know, Premiere's not running at the moment. Discord's open as well. So all that's going on on a Ryzen 3 2200G, and she didn't notice the difference when we swapped it for a Ryzen 3 1200. So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we should do that. Maybe we should get our Ryzen 5 1600 in there and see if there is actually a perceivable noticeable difference. Because she didn't notice when I put 16 gigs of RAM in there. I went from eight gigs to 16 gigs and with all those tabs open, you'd think that you'd notice, but no. Now let us, I, I, haven't, I don't think I've ever actually ever done a Cinebench run. I don't think I've done a semi bench. I don't think I have. So Aletta scored a 1435 on Cinebench. I must actually try that and see what I get. I'll tell you one thing I do like using is the user benchmark, the online one. That actually does make, does give you some pretty interesting results and gives, tells you how much better than other people with the same stuff you are or how worse. Worth doing. I think we've offended Tony with the Edge reference. Most people don't like Microsoft Edge. I've got to be honest with you, I used it for a long time, and if it wasn't for using YouTube, I probably would still use it now. Uh, bless you, 80s horror fan. Good, good New Year and all that sort of stuff to you. Oh, we put a lot of time and effort in. Calf does. I just turn the camera on and talk bollocks. Talk shit. <laughs> talk shit or talk about shit. One of the two. Hashtag ban calf for using that. I, I, yeah, I actually I agree with calf. I do actually like the Edge browser. I don't like Bing as a search engine, but I do actually like Edge as a browser in general. And I found recently Chrome is actually a little bit more buggy than Edge, which a lot of people probably won't like and won't appreciate, but I've got no reason to lie about it. I've got no affiliation with either one. And actually Chrome generally is easier to use because it does synchronize with my whole kind of YouTube life. But Edge generally does seem less buggy and a little bit faster. <clears throat> Guy Stalker uses Edge, Chrome makes him paranoid. Hmm. Actually, I said him. I'm, a, I'm assuming you're a him. Again, Sky Stalker. Could be male, could be female, I don't know. Pilotess. Pilotess, or pilot. Who knows? Edge is being scrapped. Uh, Brightex says, Edge is being scrapped. It is, but I think it's going to still be called Microsoft Edge, but they're just changing the engine that powers it. So rather than being Microsoft's own proprietary one, they're going to be using the Chromium engine, which is used in Google Chrome, which is open source. So potentially it's more dangerous, but maybe it's not. I don't know. <laughs> Skystalker equals Peter equals Guy. All good. Well... Well, that's glad we cleared that up. Uh, 
Oh, I get it. Glenzer's in the house. 1600x, and he's getting a Cinebench score of 1400. So, what did a letter get? I can't even remember. 1435. 1435, so, and what did he get? 1400. Oh, that's, that's pretty pretty decent then. Not scrap, different back end, yeah. It's <clears throat> Excuse me, I appear to have a frog in my shit. Uh, 80s Horror Fan is asking, what case is that behind you, Mike? The white one. That is the Inwin 101C, which I am actually a little bit in love with. It is actually a really, really nice case. And like this this place in here, this where we are, this is basically our living room. So the dining room. Dining room? Yeah, dining room, but we live in it. So Cash PC's there, my PC's there, streaming PC's there. This is essentially the dining table or work table. And everything else in this room is kind of like we've got studio lights and all that kind of stuff. We live in this room, so it gets pretty dusty. We've got three cats, so it's cat fur and all that sort of stuff. And here is going to be the live test. Now, those fans in there are running pretty silently, but they push quite a lot of air. And this case has only got one filter, really, which is on the bottom, which is a big pull-out filter, which I've just looked at, because the cats must have been up on this shelf because there's fur all over the front of the glass. The swines. Oh, actually, and there's beer from last week's mishaps. This is where I pull the whole lot down. So that is the filter on the bottom, and I'm not sure if you're really going to get an idea of what is going on there, but that has trapped very little dust. The way it's actually engineered is fantastic. So because the air has to go on a 90 degree angle, because it goes underneath the PC and up, obviously when the air is going at 90 degrees, the dust goes across and kind of doesn't go up. So it actually doesn't suck in very much air at all. So the mesh can be less fine to get more air go through, if that makes sense. So actually the filtration is fantastic. It doesn't pull in a lot of dust, but it pulls in a lot of clean air. And the case inside is pretty much spotless. And that's been running in here for, I don't know, six months or so. I haven't cleaned it yet. And it's absolutely spotless. The outside's covered in dust, but the inside is actually absolutely peachy. Just thought I'd share that with you. So if you're looking for a case and you want something a little bit different, which that definitely is, I don't care what anyone says, that is a, a very unique design. And I really like it. And it's not that expensive. And the fans you like. Yeah, the fans that are in there are in-win Polaris fans, RGB fans. And again, they're really good as well. There's three in the bottom. This is going to end in tears. So, can I see that on the camera? Maybe. Oh, yeah, I'll get my little thing out, can't I? So, there we go. You can see what's going on in there. So, you've got three fans on the bottom pulling up through that mesh. Do you know what? This is actually probably the most descriptive thing I've done on the channel in ages. Oh, shit. Always put your tempered glass side panel somewhere safe so it doesn't fall over. Not underneath the wire. Yeah, not underneath the wire for the camera. That'd be stupid. So yeah, got the fans on there which blow through. There's like a weird grill on the back which lets out quite a lot of air. And you've got the three fans along the bottom. It's all ventilated all very nicely. You've got the PSU up there, over by there, as they say in Wells. You've got the drive bays. There's no ventilation actually on that front panel. It's all completely solid, which actually does a good job, as you can see, of like bouncing that light. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like it. And I got our power color fans in there, the new ones I'm putting. It's pretty awesome. But it's, a, it's a great case. I like it. And you should like it too. Oh, there's Calf. Hello, Calf. She 
she doesn't like that. She doesn't appreciate that. So yeah, that's the case. I I really like it. <laughs> Sorry, just reading the comments here. You won't be sucking in no hair from you, Mike. That's very, very unkind. That's very, very true. Luckily, the uh, the desk is high enough, or that shelf is high enough, so as not to pull in any of my pubes, because that could get all tangled up in the fans, and that'd be a a right drinking nightmare. How did you snag a good-looking woman like that, you old dog? That's, hey, that's a cat. hey, <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with that? <laughs> Sad. <laughs> well, what can I say? I'm just a very lucky man. Do you know what? Actually, long story. Well, not a long story. Just a long time ago. Myself and Kaf both actually went to the same high school or secondary school. And Kaf was actually in the year above me at school. And we've known each other since the I was the first year. She was the second year. So I, that was 1985. 85? Yeah, 1985, I started in the, as the first year. And I left school, Kath left in 89, I left school in 90. And we started going out while I was still at school, I think. Yeah, and um, we've been together pretty much ever since. So, yeah. <laughs> we both look at each other and see the person that was at school, really, I think. I hope she does. <laughs> What you say? You were? That's fat then. Yeah. You, we weren't really fat, you are just like festively plump all year round. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, digressing. Right, I think that's probably, we've been there. This is two hours and 40 minutes that I'm never ever gonna get back. Wow. And now you've all seen Kath, she's been on camera even though she was there, probably biting her nails. Which she doesn't normally do. She, says she must be nervous, thinking I'm going to turn the camera around at any moment. Ah, no, she should be upset. So um, we are going to do another live stream on what day? I don't know. What day is it today? Is it Friday today? Saturday now. Uh, Saturday now. Okay. So Monday. Yeah. So Monday evening, we'll be doing a live stream for the new year, probably. Maybe, so if you want to join us for that and have a little drinky poos, that would be fantastic. And I will promise not to uh, shit myself live on camera and not in any hired vehicles. So there's a plus. Um, I can't speak for Kath because she may will have to crap herself. I don't know. Who knows? Who can tell? It's live. Anything could happen. <laughs> She's cringing over there. Um... I don't, Tony has said VOD, FTW. I'm not even sure what that means, but thanks probably. For the win. For the, yeah, for the win is definitely that. Yeah, for the win, but you need to know what the first bit is because otherwise it could be like, bang with Satanists, for the win. I don't know. Bad for Dick. Now, Brightek, actually, I, I was going to sum up in kick off them but not kick off you know like sign off but that is exactly right i want calf definitely to sit here being eye candy because at the end of the day most youtube viewers of this channel or of it type stuff are pretty much blokes and what they want to see is computer components tits and ass am i wrong no seriously like am i wrong i'm not am i that is what most people want and the cats. They love yeah, Calf says I can have the cats, but it's not really the same thing. So I've I've suggested to her get um, a letter said no. It's yeah, okay. <laughs> Video on demand for the win. Oh, I get it. VOD. Video on demand. I don't actually get it, but I kind of do. I think. I mean the replay after the stream. 
Uh, got you, yes, nice one. Um, yeah, Bright Tech, I'm in the same position. Calf doesn't really want to do it, which is a shame actually, because seriously, like, she is hilarious. When, when we worked together previously, we would just bounce off each other, not literally, well, we did once or twice, but no one knew about that. So we, we are just, we do, we start each other off and we're quite funny. And whether people get it or not, I don't know, but we enjoy ourselves. So that would be a cool thing to do. So I, I would generally like Kath to be this side over here, but you know, maybe, maybe, uh, Ah, uh, sorry, a letter's corrected as calf. It's tits and ass first, computer parts second. Yeah, of course. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, Tony says same, his wife won't go on camera either. I think that's, um... <laughs> uh, Tony's comments been held for review, so I'm not... Oh, yeah. Uh, what's that? Oh, did you let, oh, you didn't, you unblocked it, okay. So yeah, I don't know if Tony wanted that revealed, but there you go, there you go. <laughs> if you have fun doing it, the people will too, that's how it works. It's totally, I totally, totally agree with you. I think that's what it'll be. I think, um, yeah, eventually it will, it will be that point. It takes a little while, not everybody is uh, comfortable with a camera shoved in their face. And I've got to be honest with you, I'm totally not, but I haven't got much choice because otherwise this would be very short lived. So I'd do it anyway. And what the hell? I'm, I'm old enough now and wise enough and stupid enough to not really care what people think. So if people want to watch, fine. If they don't want to watch or they want to take the piss, hey, that's fine too. Don't bother me. Just keep on watching, that's what I say. Uh, what was I going to say? It's sad when people use women to get views. There are tons of channels that do it. Now, I actually totally agree with that because I've noticed very, very recently that the channels that have done it, now I probably am gonna throw a little bit of shade now, but it's not entirely shade, but I can understand why they're doing it because at the end of the day, most people who have a YouTube channel, it is essentially a business or an income. So if you can increase your income or increase your viewers, then you'll pretty much do whatever you need to do it, which yeah, is fair game. <coughs> so if you look at certain channels, one which I actually did analyze and looked at quite closely was Bitwit. Now, if you do the Awesome Source Network or Bitwit channel, um, his uh, wife, girlfriend, I think it's wife, uh, who he refers to as Wifey Source, she is becoming more and more popular on the videos or more in the videos and his numbers have gone up massively, which they have a fantastic relationship and they kind of do bounce off each other really well. And he kind of plays up to it a little bit. And she seem, she kind of, you think that she would rule the roost and he's the kind of doing things like, oh God, she's gonna go mad. And it's a great setup and it does work well. When there's more than one person on, on the screen, it works well because it's, if you don't like one person, you may like the other. Like a boy band works. A solo singer may not get many uh, views or get to number one, but put that solo singer in with a group of other solo singers and make a boy band, and you got... Like Girls Aloud. Yeah, like Girls Aloud. Girls Aloud, who are not a boy band, but you, you get the gist. So that is essentially what is happening. So you add people to the mix, and it increases the flavor. People want to watch it. Now, whether they're doing it in a kind of a, a cynical way of uh, sex sales and by doing getting their other halves on, that is why they do it. I don't know. I wouldn't comment. If they're doing it for that reason, hey, more power to them because it seems to be working. But that is what I'm saying. It does. It does seem to work. And having a male and a female, or two males, two females, whatever, the more the merrier, and it, it does seem to work better. It does increase the viewership. So, I don't know, what do you, what do you, um, what do you people think? Tech Deals is streaming live, live now. Well, actually, Tech Deals is streaming love now. 
Now that is one thing I would definitely not like to see is Tech Deals dude loving live on camera. There is nothing I would like to see less than his pearly white teeth smashing away at the back doors of his wife. No, 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 no. Too much. Please erase that from my mind. Wow. Unbelievable. <laughs> I, I'm trying to think what his name is. What's the, the name of the guy who does tech deals? Because his channel is phenomenal. He has had some massive, massive growth. I, I actually looked at some of his channels to see what he's done previously. His presentation style is kind of almost stereotypically American bloke in front of camera. Very, very straight laced, but very knowledgeable. And he does a fantastic job. He genuinely, genuinely does. I watched some of his streams for hours and it's just like completely captivating. And after you think, why have I just watched that? But once you start watching it, you can not watch it. I think it is the pearly white teeth. He has got the most amazing teeth. You seriously need to check him out. Um, tech deals. Yeah, tech deals is great. I'll tell you what, I would love to get on to float plane with uh, Linus Media Group for tech deals. That would be amazing. I would totally, totally love to be on float plane. That would be brilliant. Oh, Bright Tech, you and Kath do a great job. You're full of shit, but thank you. Appreciate it. Sly Stalker says, when you get older, the little stuff means less. Well, my little stuff definitely means less right now. I think it's Brewer's Droop. Bright Tech 09 has saved the day and asked a technical question. Do you use OBS to control your cameras, Mike? Uh, and I think you should grow man boobs, Mike. Now, to be fair, if it wasn't for the fact that this t-shirt was slightly loose anyway, I'm definitely rocking some great titties. You may not notice from this angle, and they are slightly hairier than normal, but they're not bad. And I'm actually working on it. When he's cold, like a playlist. Yeah. I, um, like nerds like girls too. There's a there's a bumper slogan. Uh, yeah, I do. I use OBS to control the cameras. So you have your sources. So you have all your different sources in the sources box, and in the scenes box, you create a scene. So whichever one of your sources you want in the scene, you add, and vice versa, and you set a hotkey to your scene. So scene one is like my main camera. Scene two is my C920, the webcam. And scene number three is a desktop. So if I go number one, well, it's on number one anyway, so that's stupid. Uh, number two is that camera there. So hello. If I do number three, goes so you can see what's on my desktop. And back to one again. Or I think if I can do it, do I do it there? Yes. Oh, that's not working now. Why is this not working? Oh, I get it. There we go. Picture in picture. Yeah, I'm, get, I'm actually learning to use OBS a little bit now. It's pretty cool. But I need, I either need more cameras or more fingers or one of those Elgato stream decks. So I can just have it here switch between the cameras, that would be absolutely perfect. Or selfie stick. Because I would love to be able to control that keyboard from there without having to have a separate wireless keyboard. I suppose I could do VPN in, but I need to see the cam... Mm. You get the idea. Let's move that back down. There it is. So yeah, OBS is uh, awesome. Big time. I'm, mm. Oh, big time is that? Big typo. Big typo. Some writer I am. Can't even type now. Comes to us all eventually a letter. Age is a terrible thing.
Kyle Bitwit's wife is adorable. I, I, okay, Bitwit's wife is amazing and I really love it. But if you close your eyes, she sounds just like Marge Simpson and it cracks me up. She's such a cute voice. Definitely go and listen to it and just close your eyes and listen to it. And just imagine him, imagine her saying Bart or something along those lines that would be typically said in The Simpsons. But I think, I'm not sure what that, um, is that, it can't be California that they live, I think. I don't know if it is or not. I'd love to know where the accent comes from. But it's got that very kind of Marge kind of voice. Or whether it's just me being English and kind of generalising American accents into one kind of cartoon caper. Anyway, moving on. Moving. Tony doesn't agree with the idea of float plane. Okay. Totally understandable. Although I think it is going to be the... Actually, depending on how this whole kind of Article 15 or 51 or... I don't know. What is that thing that we did, Kath? Article 12 or something or 13? 13. Yeah, basically the EU thing about copyright in the videos and stuff essentially float plane and others like that will kind of circumvent that kind of stuff and also on float plane you can basically say what you like there's no restrictions there's no demonetizations if you've got a point to make you can make it if people want to subscribe to you great but there's no no censorship whatsoever it's completely open so I can kind of get what they're trying to do I can see it being abused uh, I'd imagine they'd have something in place to kind of prevent that, but I don't know. It'd be quite nice. It'd be nice to be on a camera thing or some kind of streaming service where you didn't have to worry about every single thing you said in case you get demonetized, because that is a, quite a concern for a lot of people. Moving on up. Um, Welsh Tony, what the F? What capture card are you using? Zero delay. Is there zero delay? No, there is a little bit of delay. It is on a bit. Okay. Ah, uh, see, now, Tony's asked a, a very interesting question there. So what I've done is, um, with your capture card and audio, if you capture separate audio from a separate feed, so say for instance in your sources you've got your camera, then you've got like a USB microphone or a plug-in microphone, they will completely be out of sync because of the processing time it takes for the camera to decode the audio against the video, because obviously video is a higher bit rate, etc, etc. So I run the audio from my camera through the HDMI into the capture card, the HD60, into the PC, so the audio and video is synchronized completely before it even gets to the PC. So that keeps it in sync. What I do is when I switch sources, my camera is still in the sources list, but it's set as a lower level. So when I switch to the webcam, the other camera is still active and on, and you're still receiving the audio from it, but because it's layered underneath, you can't see it. So the audio is always coming from the Lumix camera because it's got a great preamp and the HDMI is going to be converted at the same time so it makes it all stay in sync a lot nicer and hopefully you don't experience any lag even after <laughs> nearly three hours so hopefully after three hours I should still be totally totally in sync audio and video wise you know so my lips should move to the sound of my voice. <laughs> oh dear. You get it. Brightech, what mic are you using? Now this actually was one of my best purchases I've ever made, which is the um <coughs> Boya. Boya B Y M one, which is a, a wired lapel mic, but it's got this cool little thing in here, which is an amplifier. So it's a low gain mic, but it boosts it actually in this little barrel and there's a battery in there. And this cable is about seven meters long. So it goes all the way down around the floor, 
into the back of the camera, which is the camera is probably another arm's length away, so probably six, seven foot away. So you can do things to camera and you can be away, but still get really perfect, clear audio. And I think that is one of the main things that I've learned in making these videos, that your audio, it's all about, it's three things basically, AVL, audio, visuals, and lighting. If you get all three of those right, you're pretty much golden. So audio is really important because I hate watching videos where the audio is wrong or it just sounds rubbish or it's overly hissy or, you know what I mean, just poor audio is just tiring to watch or to listen to. So decent lav mic, one of the best things I ever bought. What what uh, microphones do you use out of interest? I would imagine from listening to your videos, you probably... I would imagine it's a shotgun mic or a condenser, a desk mounted condenser. You'll have to correct me if I'm wrong. Ah, do you, so you use the same mic, the Boya. Uh, sorry, to answer Tony's question, no, the webcam is literally straight as it is because the webcam I've actually got muted, so the audio doesn't come from the webcam, it's purely audio. So the theory being that because audio processes a slightly different kind of, almost like nanoseconds, so you do get a slight lag, and being that that's a 1080p feed, that's a 1080p feed, the roughly they should be exactly the same, so they should they pretty much sync up perfectly without any adjustments at all. Ah uh, yes, that explains it. So the microphone's on a boom. Yeah, I've I've got I've actually been moaned that before because I've got really good hearing. And I can hear like a gnat taking a piss out in the backyard. It's really, in the car. yeah, a gnat pissing in my car or shitting in my car. But my hearing is really, really good or really exaggerated. So I hear things really badly. So when I'm editing a video, I can tell. And also when I watch YouTube videos, I can almost tell what microphone they're using because of either the distance between them or the clarity. Some people, um, you can tell whether they're using a shotgun mic where they really shouldn't be, or it's a little bit too far away. Because really a shotgun mic needs to be almost as close as a lav mic in some respects, like literally like just out of the shot. So where's my hand? So I, de I don't think I could get away with a lav mic here because it would be too high. Maybe just about, look, I'm looking at the screen over there, there's a bit of a lag. But yeah, a, a, a shotgun mic there would maybe just about work, but you never get the clarity you get with a lav mic with yeah, any other mic. Brilliant. You have brilliant brands. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't had the best of brands to be fair, but you can tell with, um, again, certain YouTubers who listen to it, you can tell that they're using a some kind of condenser or some other mic. Quite often you get people using a condenser mic, like a, a Yeti, and they're using it and it's angled slightly away and it's to the left or right of them. So when you're listening to it, even if you're listening on the PC speakers, you can kind of tell just ever so slightly that the stereo is slightly offset. And I, I detect, I notice it. I don't know if other people do. Uh, doo -doo. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> so I think that pretty much wraps up the mic stuff. Mic's on the mic. Captain Backer. Captain Backer's got a question. Stronghold questions. I don't think be sorry for questions. As I've always said before, there's no such thing as a stupid question, only an easy answer. Which is true. Um, so does it have good airflow in your opinion? Or is it all about fan placement? Some people say stronghold airflow sucks, and it's important for me. Um, well, to be completely honest, it is more about fan placement and kind of thinking about the airflow plan. 
Now the stronghold case on one side is completely blanked off, so the air is mostly taken in from underneath the front and the vented side. So if you've got fans which are in front of the metal panel, where the mounting option is, then the air's got to travel at a really weird angle to get through the fans and into the case. And also, if you only use one fan on the front, because there's no filtration or anything, um, it kind of creates a weird sort of turbulence. So you need to use, realistically, a minimum of two fans on the front, which ideally, just slightly above the ledge of the basement. So that way, uh, the air that's being drawn in will be drawn in from the sides and not kind of pulled in around from either the back of itself or whatever. So that is the only kind of thing I would say against that airflow design, but that is the same with pretty much most cases. But because it is so open, um, I, I have been tempted to put other things in there to block off areas to direct the airflow. But I put the third fan in there, so at the moment all three fans are pulling in, so there's no way really for the air to kind of circle back around itself. So it's all coming in from that side vent and underneath. And uh, yeah, it seems to be working pretty well. It's keeping cool. And CAF has the PC on pretty much 12 hours a day sometimes, if, if not more. And no problems at all. And it's an overclocked um, Ryzen 3 2200G. So yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Right, I think, is there any more questions? No, I think that's about it. Right, this is three hours and six minutes. This is way too long. This was supposed to be a half an hour stream just to say hello and catch up. And instead, it's been three hours that you people will not get back from your lives. But I thank you for joining with me. And Kath kind of thanks you for joining with us. And um, to all the other YouTubers out there that have joined us tonight, such as Brytech, Epic Giveaways, Epic World Giveaways was YouTube? Yes, I think so. Was it Epic Giveaways? You get the idea. Sky Stalker, thank you very much for your kind contributions. It is very much appreciated. And thank you for making our disco ball illuminate in its lovely way. And um, yeah, hopefully you've all had a bit of a laugh tonight. I've uh, opened up about my life and told you about taking uh, evasive maneuvers in my vehicle in more ways than one. So hopefully, yeah, we'll say it. Hope you've had a good, good time. Uh, we will, <laughs> thanks Mike. You took two and a half hours out of my shift. I knew I would be of use for something one day. My teacher at school said I wouldn't be of any use to anybody at any point in my life, and I'd be a miserable thing. And yeah, maybe I'm proving them right. Anyway, thanks very much for joining us. We will catch you again on New Year's Eve if you wish to uh, join us. And obviously New Year's Eve is going to be a weird one around the world because different time zones. But we will be partaking hopefully around about um, 11 o'clock through to just after midnight on New Year's Eve. So if you want to join us for a few bevies and a bit of a laugh and a joke. And uh, maybe even get calf in a little skin tight uh, cat suit in front of the camera. I don't know. It might happen. It's very bloody unlikely, but you never know, it could happen. If not, I'll just take some pictures while she's not looking, while she's asleep. I'll print them out and I'll stick them here adjacent over by here for the Welsh viewers or over by there for the other Welsh viewers in Cardiff. So, we'll be back now in a minute. <laughs> yeah, we'll be back now in a minute, later on this week on New Year's Eve. So if you want to join us, feel free to do so. Again, thank you everyone for taking part, your comments, your contributions and all that super, super stuff. Calf's, yeah, calf in a cat suit seems to be going, so that is going to be the hashtag for the week, calf in a cat suit. Make it happen, people. If we uh, get enough shares on that, calf will have to do it. So, again, thank you all very much, and we will see you on... I don't even know what day it is. What day is it, calf? Tell me again. Thursday, Monday. Wednesday, Monday. Monday, that's real quick. We will see you Monday night if you want to join us. See you then. This is where I press the wrong button.